Because apparently that area of the body never gets vitamin D. <laughs> and, oh. it's, and it's a really important area to get vitamin D. Lauren cried, not clickbait. Yeah. Chris <laughs> came. Wouldn't be the first time on the internet. <laughs> no. No, it's been a minute since your last cry session. I think everyone should cry on the internet, to be honest. I agree. And we're gonna start the podcast right there. And if and, and if you have and there's like a there's a wave of people who haven't, and I'm like, I'm currently trying to get all my friends to like yeah. get in the habit of t- taking videos of themselves while crying. I also, <laughs> you know what? I okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Wild Till Nine. We're here today with Chris Olson. Hi, I'm Chris. And we like to cry on camera. And we sure do. Uh, we brought in a professional cry I actually therapist. I love a live photo. I love a live photo of crying. I love a live photo of crying. I think it encapsulate, encapsulates everything you need without having to like make it too much for production. Cause I feel like when I hit like stop and I'm like, yep. <laughs> and then have to hit like, yeah. yeah. What, you, you, what do you mean? A live photo for crying. Oh, like it's just like you make yeah. sure the live feature is on. Right. So as the tear is falling, you get it halfway through, but the live shows the full fall. It's like right. a, a gif of your tear. Literally. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to hear something sick? Yeah. Something yes. sick and twisted. Get yes. into it. One time I was crying and I dropped my phone <gasps> while taking a video of it. It made for a great transition. <gasps> Something's meant to be. And I, I have used that for a transition more than once. Made for a beautiful transition because what do I do when I'm feeling better? I pick up the phone and I show and the after. <laughs> and I show the after. Oh my God, that is incredible. There was this one transition that I did where it was like, you look like ass, you put the phone down. And I learned right. this from another TikToker is that you put your phone in a paper plate and then you spin it. And that's how you did the transition. Oh, I've seen that one. Yeah. I never knew how they were. The paper plate makes so much sense. It's, you duct tape the paper plate to a surface and then spin your phone in the paper plate. Oh, okay. I and see. And then you, you spin I it, see. pick it up and, and, you know, cut it together. But right. that's what I'm envisioning that you did on accident, but it was Yeah, perfect. I wouldn't like recommend like, okay, next time you're crying, like, drop your whip phone. Your phone <laughs> whip your phone. Whip your phone A couple feet away. Throw it. <laughs> Check your Apple Care coverage. Yeah. And then and then drop it. Um, and but it did. It really. It's that's that's the way things work. Is that's like sometimes work. you have really dumb videos or yeah. very strange thing happens while you're like <laughs> actually filming, and it makes for something beautiful and magical. <laughs> it, intentional cinematic have uh, 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 excellence. Yeah. Have you ever taken a photo of yourself crying? Have you ever cried? Oh. Jamie cries like once every three years. That's right. what I was. I was feeling yeah. the vibe as soon as I asked. I know, right? You're like this. This red doesn't. It's not that I don't cry. It's just that uh, it's been a while. It's been I, a minute. The last thing that made him cry actually was the ending of Men in Black Three. Cut. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I want to tell you that this man cries again <laughs> once every three years, and <laughs> the one time. That, wait, what do you think that says about him? Like, without knowing much about him, what's the read on that? There's some deep seated mental illness that has yet to come out in therapy, probably. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> other than that, I think it says I am a straight man. <laughs> <laughs> Many people have been wanting to see that it's confirmed for a long time. Oh, right, right. Confirmed, confirmed yeah. by the fact that he cried. Like I've met in Black Three. Let's be honest. <laughs> there was just a moment. Yeah, it just yeah. It, it was a really. It was. It was. It was so hard. nice. It was so nice. It was so nice. It was so nice. Was it like a happy cry or was it a sad? Cry? Yeah, yeah. So it was a happy cry at the end of Men in Black. It was a. It was a. <laughs> I'm thrilled. <laughs> Or my God. Uh, yeah, it was happy. <laughs> right. And you are in therapy. And, oh, no. no okay. So no, once again, actively. there we go. I know. No. I know. Straight man <laughs> no, not in therapy. Wait, no, no, I've already watched Men in Black 3. <laughs> right. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm so in, there's therapy. I'm at the end right of the road. There. Yeah. Oh, that was therapy. There's yeah. no that was more the end to go. Of it. I finished mm-hmm. it and it mm-hmm. made me elude mm-hmm. you know, that, uh, no, exude mm-hmm. that emotional connection. Sure, sure, sure. I think, uh, I think taking photos and videos when you're crying is a good way to track your progress in life. Absolutely. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Like I was just looking for a crying photo recently <laughs> of, <laughs> I have a folder, no, I, um, <laughs> but I was looking for a crying photo to, to use that was taken recently. And I realized I had no crying photos <gasps> with blonde hair. Oh my God, so it's and been I was a like, little bit. Oh my God. It, well, yeah. I guess 
Maybe it's been a maybe it's been a little bit since I cried um, and took a photo of it. Do you want to go watch Men in Black Three? I don't think that's going to do it for me. I'm going to be uh, honest. I'm not sure that that's the <laughs> that's the exact that's thing. What they all say. But I would say if I'm really upset about something, I'm not gonna. I'm not whipping out the phone to take a photo to cry about it. I'll, it's the it's like the medium stuff. It's the medium stuff. It's the yeah. listening to the music and crying. It's mm. the watching a movie and crying. Mm. So that would have been a perfect opportunity. Mm -hmm. If like there's something deeply upsetting me, I'm not like, hold on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then like taking the photo. Right, right, right. You know? Right. But, what was the last thing you cried at? Hmm. It was probably over be feeling general loneliness. Mm. Um, probably over a boy at some point. Oh. Um, like it recently, um, a friend actually, so we talked about how I'm getting a place in New York. Yes, yes, yes. And um, a friend, and I'm keeping my place here. And a friend asked me like, where do you think you're going to spend more time? Mm. And I was like, honestly, it just depends on wherever I have a crush. A hundred percent. If I yes. have a crush in New York, I'll probably be in New York yeah. more. If I have a yeah. crush in yeah. LA, I'll be here more because I will do anything for love. <laughs> so my number I is three. <laughs> This is great. <laughs> you heard it here on Wild to Line. I will do anything for love. I'm going to put Chris's personal cell phone line right oh in the description. God, oh you send him a text. Please yeah. flash it <laughs> on screen. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait, Thank you guys. Are we interested in, also I just reminded me, I need to update my phone. It looks so nice, the new update. Oh yeah, this is the new, the iPhone 14, which is really the iPhone 10 in a different case. Right. Really? Yeah. yeah. With an extra extra pixel or two for okay. the for the tear photos, right? For the tear photos, which right. you think yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. That is the absolute upgrade you need. Yeah. Um. Are you? Do you? Do you want a boyfriend right now? Do you? Or do you want to just? Do you like the idea of a boyfriend? <laughs> do we like having crushes? I don't like. Yes. I mean, I I I do want. I just want. I I. I <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? This? What do you want? I, I, Last um, time. <laughs> I want to stop feeling dread and loneliness most of my life. Um, but I think it's like, yeah, I think, I think probably the idea of having someone in my life mm. is better than the actual thing probably. because, like, I've been. I've been on and off dating ever since like I went through a breakup mm -hmm. um, relatively publicly um, in <laughs> <laughs> since like January. I mean, there was a, there was a few months that I wasn't really doing anything, but now I would say I've been dating a little bit and um, it it's, Men just, they're, How's they, never, it going? they never fail to surprise me. Um, I'm like wary to talk about the most recent one, but I don't think he remembers my name at this point. So, um, <laughs> so it's, here we go. <laughs> so it's just like, I, w there's, w I'll, I'll go on a date with someone and they'll be like, I'm having such a good time with you. Let's keep this going. And then not text me back for four more days. And I'm like, okay. Four so days? Four days. I was going, so, is that? And, and you know what? Do you no, see his face? No. Do you see this? He was the real kicker too. He said on date two, he was like, I, <laughs> I'm a fraud. He said, I love how chill you are. I'm not we're chill. Not, we're not chill. I'm not we're not chill. chill. And no, I was no, like, no, I've no, made no, a mistake, no. but now I have to upkeep chill. this vibe of chill. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. the four days of not texting passed and he texted me and I'm like, oh my, hello. Excruciating oh my four God. Days. I wasn't even thinking, I wasn't even thinking, oh, you, <laughs> you, I forgot. <laughs> hey. Um, and so- I kind of set myself up for failure for that one. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you know what? I've I've started just, I, I remember and I try to remind myself that like it always happens when you're just giving the energy to yourself. And if right. I'm just like literally sitting in this like, I'm so lonely vibe. And like every time I travel <laughs> home, the first night in LA, I will cry about not having a boyfriend. <sighs> every time, it's like clockwork. It's like a rite of passage. Because I will land sit back. Yeah. back on my couch and mm -hmm. I'll be like, I'm alone. Just, just me. <laughs> And just me, just me. And then uh, the next night I'll be laying on my couch watching a movie and I'll be like, I am so happy no one is here to bother me. Right, 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 right. So right. I go in and out yeah. a lot. But at the end of the day, I think like, you know, who doesn't want a little bit a of little companionship? A little, a little person to share your things with. Like literally I was, I was saying like, just to come in at 9 p.m., pet me to sleep and then <laughs> yes. leave. Yes. You know, because yes. I don't need to talk to anyone in the morning. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the luck? What? <laughs> I'm just trying to think of like how. No, no. I was like, what do we? What do we do in the morning? Uh, yeah, neither of us are there? like we're, grunt. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, neither of us. I would say we Still match here. each other in the morning in terms of like the need to have conversation of any kind. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like that could be a point. I feel the 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 need to not have a conversation of any kind. Right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's and that's what I I feel like. 
uh, I was, it was so helpful. Honestly, it was crazy wa- listening to your podcast with Hannah right before this, because okay. you guys talk about this. You're literally like, oh, I don't know if I want to find someone who is the opposite of me or who mm-hmm. matches my energy. Mm-hmm. And I'm going mm-hmm. through that right now because like, I do want to be the star of the relationship occasionally, but also <laughs> sometimes- As you should. But sometimes maybe I do want someone who is able to match my energy and I don't feel weird around right. when I'm being like my quirky self. Yeah. But I would say my quirky self is only me 10% of the time when like the camera's in front of me. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I don't want to speak. Okay. What don't you want? Someone who's not going to text me back for four days. Okay. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> we don't have time for that. I just don't have the time. We just okay. don't have time. I don't have the time because my mind will create the craziest yes. stories. Right. Also, if it makes you feel better, like this is the bane of every straight girl's existence as well too. Right. Working so hard in overdrive to be the chill to girl. To be chill. To be the chill girl. Yeah. That's like not too clingy and right. not coming on too hot. Like it is the bane. I got lucky and he was not chill whatsoever at the Good. very beginning. So I didn't have to think about it. <laughs> right. But right. I saw that, that. Yeah. It was like, I you think about it at all times. Like four days, it'd be- yeah. Do you have something to say? I, I, no, I, I just, oh, you said a thing and I want to go back. If we could just go sure, back. Sure, go ahead, go ahead. Right. The, the not chill thing. Right. Yeah. I just, I was. Uh, it's a compliment. I would say take that, take take pride in that. Yeah. That's what every girl wants. I know. I, um, hmm. I think I've been, uh, 2017 me is insulted, I think. Do you just feel like it's not very like game of you? Yeah, yeah. no, I, can we, can we just like pretend? Sure. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. It's okay, so he was super chill. <laughs> super when chill, he's crazy guys first met. chill. Um, yeah, that is, that is the issue that yeah. we all run into. I and know. like, I am, I'm like, especially on the internet, I'm unabashedly not chill. <laughs> like, okay, but like, do you, when you go on a date with someone, do they typically know what you do or not? So sometimes I feel like they um, let on less than they know. Like yeah. they're like, oh, I didn't really know anything. Right. But then they'll reference something. And I'm mm. like- You're like, that's a deep mm. How did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> and, then I, and then I'm thinking about it. But I think I think there's like a middle ground. I don't think I'm like, I'm, I'm never, uh, I'm not really like looking to date someone who knows already everything yeah. about me. Cause that takes out the fun of like, it's like getting it's like to having know a someone. cheat code. If they have right. like the open book on you and you have nothing. Right. Right. I would want to call it that for the average person that doesn't put a lot of their life on the internet. That would be difficult to not at least. Are you kidding me? If to. I if I wasn't like an influencer on the internet and I started going on dates with someone who had everything, you know that I would consume every right. piece. No, I, I know because yeah. I'm wondering like, are they plain chill almost like out of courtesy? Like, oh, oh yeah, what that's, do you that's do? True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I think like, I, I loved all 19 of your last posts. Let me walk through <laughs> right, my favorites. Right. <laughs> I know. I'm not like I'm not like your liars. Also, I love <laughs> your hair stroking <laughs> on the <laughs> It's just, it, you use a prop. <laughs> like give yourself an activity to, to speak um, more casually. This is me being chill. This is great. Um, so, uh, but I, I, I wouldn't say that like, okay, you're a liar because mm-hmm. you haven't watched it. But I think, I so I do think there's a little bit of a, of a mix of yeah. a middle ground. I do think it's probably helpful maybe a little bit to know a little bit about someone. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. know, we all do like, even if you're not an internet personality, like don't people Google Things about oh my God. Their, I actually, I am the people a they're sleuth. dating. I'm yeah. actually, I'm already like, I'm starting to like get on the side of even like whether it's personal or, or business. Uh-huh. If you set time with somebody to take time out of your day and theirs, and you didn't do any right. research beforehand, right. I almost like it's weird. That's a red flag. I like, yeah. I don't want to have to yeah. like give you mm. a resume of things that I've recently done if it's just all on the internet. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it checking up on your credit score? Yes, sometimes it is. <laughs> Except for that yes. one time that I was trying to get approved for a house. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Didn't think so most of the time. Well, Chime is here to do that for you. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Building credit can be really hard to do when you're first starting out. I can attest to this. And that is why I love that Chime is here to help. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. That is so incredibly important. I just, like, until you realize- No one tells you. Just how impactful that exact thing is. Literally no one tells you'll you. You'll never realize how it's one of the most important mm-hmm. things in life. Sorry, I digress. The members, like me, can see an increase of 30 points on average. That's a lot of points. That's between, I don't think- that's No, no, that's like, like, that's like a make or break. Over, like, over the course of years and years, mm-hmm. that is hundreds of thousands. Mm-hmm. Not, it could be millions of dollars. Sorry. All of this- and you know how many, how much they charge in annual <laughs> fees, Lauren? You know how much they charge in annual fees for this? How much? None. None. No fees. No fees. No fees. No large security deposits or credit checks to apply. 
Start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and does not affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com backslash WT9. That's Chime.com backslash WT9. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank and a pursuant to a license from Visa USA, Chime checking account, and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some user score may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Have you ever had one of those weeks where everything is going wrong? It seems like nothing is working in your favor and instead of going into problem solving mode, you are in problem focus mode. I know when my plate gets filled to the brim, it's hard for my brain to find solutions to problems that can easily be fixed. It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem solving mode when faced with a challenge in life. But when you learn about how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals no matter how big or small. And finding a therapist that's right for you is such a game changer. I know for me personally, talking to a therapist has really helped lower my stress levels and having the right therapist is so important. Shout out Dave. Being able to talk about all the things that are causing stress in my life, ironically, makes me feel less stressed. If you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. When you want to become a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash WT9 today to get 10% off your first month. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash W-T-9. And right. also too, I feel like, especially like on dating apps, I don't know if you're on any of the apps, but like when I was on Hinge, especially yeah. now, things have changed since like I've been in a relationship, but like you <laughs> answer so day. many questions. I think you right. even answer like if you're vaccinated and stuff now, right? Like you I'm answer sure. a lot. It's like your political affiliation, your religion. Are you vaccinated? Do you want kids? Do you right. have pets? Not my God. Oh my God. That's what I'm saying. It's like, so it even gives you like a you large everything. resume at the beginning. Which is Makes really sense. tough because it's like, Th- then it's literally your your swipe decision is based on yeah. just all of these answers yeah. that you already know. Right. When I, I honestly, I feel like the best dating app these days is like Instagram. Oh. It's just like you, huh. I feel like, I feel like most of the dates I've gone on recently have been people sliding into d- the DMs. Oh my because, God. Well, you heard it here first, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Weird. Ladies and and by ladies, I mean the gentlemen Instagram and gentlemen. At Chris Olson. <laughs> Um, please, the DMs are open. I would say there was, cause there was a section of my life where, especially after the breakup, I was like, I'm not sliding into DMs. I don't chase, I attract mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. whatever belongs mm-hmm. to me will find me. And I was just allowing them to come in. Mm-hmm. And now I've turned a page. And I chase. <laughs> I am like, when he says, when he says <laughs> sliding into DMs, <laughs> he means sliding into DMs. <laughs> I literally saw a cute guy on TikTok last night. I went to his Instagram and I DM'd him, do you want to go on a date? And we're going on a date on Friday. Wait, oh my God, I love that for you. (laughs) When's the marriage? uh, Exactly. I love that. That's what I'm saying. He said just yes immediately? He was like, yeah, I would, well, when I clicked on his Instagram, it did say follow back. So he already knew, oh, okay. I guess he had okay. already, but he didn't follow me on TikTok. So I was like, rude. Okay. But no, that's like equal playing ground now. Right, like, right. yeah, one and I yeah, found you yeah. on TikTok mm-hmm. and you know he, me from Instagram. Yes. So I sent him the DM and I was like, so I guess I kind of did know he was likely going to see it because yeah. it was just going to go right into primary. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> then it ended up working out. And now we're going on a date and I'll <gasps> be, I'll look forward to reporting back. <gasps> After I that, can't wait. but if you don't hear anything, this then is Thursday. we just pretend just that it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't or happen. if it takes more than four days to follow up afterwards, cut. Right, right. Cut. My thing is four days. So first three, mm-hmm. but why day four? What, what was the? What no, was okay. the, I want to know what the thing was day four. That's the okay. Thing. So here is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> the giggle. <laughs> and, and if if he is listening, just stop. For, for your own sake. Yeah. Um, so we were supposed to hang out on um, Thursday and I was like, okay, I'm ready. Um, I We were texting during the day. Wait, preset? Mm-hmm. This date? was pre the four days. Okay. Um, so this was like, I want, this was last week. We were supposed to hang out Thursday and I texted and I was like, um, we talked a little bit during the day and then I was like, so what do you want to do tonight? <gasps> Nothing. Never heard from <gasps> him. But I did know a friend was coming into town for the weekend. So I said to my friends, I was like, I bet like, I'm going to get a call Monday morning mm. and um, that's what's going to no, happen. And no. I got a call Monday morning. Oh my God. <laughs> the <gasps> audacity though of someone to not take six seconds out of their day. Right. 
Right. I'm it's just race. like, it's very quick. It's like, I, I, you know, I know people can be call people and I know it can be like, oh yeah, you know what I'm doing this weekend. But like, I'm not a chill person. I would just, I would just appreciate a text. That's all. Yeah, and like, I really did have a good time with this guy. So mm-hmm. I'm not like fully writing it off. Right. Um, but I, no, but we're running it off. Th- yeah, yeah. I don't, a lot would have to change. Right. Like it, it was just, I, I think I was just, it, it was a little, it was a little hurtful. I was just yeah. like- you, That would ruin my weekend. Right. I was just a little, I was a little hurt. Mm. Yeah, um, 100%. But you know- That's disrespectful of your time and we're not here for that. That would genuinely ruin my next three days. It reminds me of the time that I would like go on a first date with a girl who obviously had, had the situation happen about 900 times. Right. And she would just read me like a 19 page. Okay, a couple things I just want to get out of the way now. Jeremy is um, a rehab Rehabilitated fuckboy. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, um, Big time. How could I be Big not time ch- Anyway, how do we talk uh, about that? I just, uh, the point is, you were like multiple bullet points of things she wanted to like cross off her list that like she didn't come up with on that date, I'm sure. Like cross off in terms of she needed you to be or things that she needed you to know about her? Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. No. So at least we know that there are girls that are less chill than us. Yeah. No, well, I, that's, know, that's, I know. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like, say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, I did not say that, but I didn't right. say right, that. Right, right. So I know, but I know that's true. At the same time, I know there are girls who are less chill than me. There are gays who are less chill than mm-hmm. me. And I do know I have elements of chill to me. Um, mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. just aren't really present, especially with the first few months of dating. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I'll get chill later down the line, but mm-hmm. before then, like allow me to be obsessed and you obsess back is all I ask. I yeah. don't think that's asking too much. And I don't think that's asking too much. And this has been the issue that I've run into dating recently is I'm, I'm an all in girl. Me too. I'm an all, yeah. what's your sign? I'm a Leo. What are you? I'm a Capricorn. I don't know anything about Capricorns. I think we both just feel really hard. Yeah. And, um, Capricorns are also known to not show their feelings. And mm-hmm. I think I have a mix of that though. Like I don't, but then I also do. Regular, I'm just more I methodical. I also cry on the internet, but like yeah. at the same time, I don't want right, to Right, right, right. Yes, but yes, yes, I, I cry on the internet, but don't ask why. Right, 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 right. It's the vibe right. Yes, of it. So yes. I am, I'm a feeler. I love hard. I love hard. I love fast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And I will just dive in immediately. And I think what I run into is I give someone a lot early on and then mm. they're relatively unappreciative of it. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to pull back. I'm going to, we're going to turn mm-hmm, around mm-hmm, to me. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I pull back, they're like, but wait, no. Mm. And I'm like, where was this? Mm-hmm. Where, no, 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 no. So let's so let's actually run it back. Let's run back the tape. Where was this when I was feeling this way? Right, because they want to receive all of, like the showering of love, but they right. don't want to be right, right. So they're like, oh my god, they're obsessed with me, and yeah. then they just take all of it but give nothing back. I remember. Do you guys remember Wordle? Like the game, when, when Chris. You, when I tell you, you that I play Wordle every single day in a group chat of okay. family members and friends. Great. Yeah, but what do you? You will not. Na- Wordle time! Like you'll scream. I'm kidding. Okay, I don't. Good. I go to bed at twelve oh two every night yeah. after I do my Wordle. Oh, okay. So let's start sending each other our results. <gasps> do you Wordle every day? I do day? it every day. <gasps> oh my god! And so this is actually a part of my story. This is a part of my sad story. Oh. I was okay. Wordling with a boy that I was kind of involved with, and we would send each other our results every morning. One day he stopped. No. He just stopped. And when <gasps> I tell you that broke my heart, that and is I, hard. I brought it no, up. My, no, my heart just broke in pieces. I me. brought it up when we were talking about what was going on yeah. and why my feelings were pulled away. I was like, well, honestly, my heart was a little bit broken when you stopped sending me the word. And he was like, <laughs> I'll restart. I was like, like no, but it's, it's too late. Too? It's too what? late. You broke the streak. What made you stop? And the other thing was we created playlists for each other. And then he, my my name was, he his playlist was my name. My playlist <laughs> oh was my his God, name. Oh my God, that's adorable. But then he changed the name one day out of nowhere. <gasps> he didn't. When I cried walking my little butt to Alfred that morning, <gasps> I cried. Everyone doesn't remember top eight, but that would be the equivalent of you being removed from the MySpace yeah, top eight. It was yeah. really painful. That's horrible. And I can't believe I'm talking about all of this publicly. Oh my God, it's okay, But I'm trauma. not naming names. Yeah, yeah, we're processing trauma we're here. We're processing trauma. We're processing um, trauma. It's just, it's, it, it, I've just been going through, like I, f- I find myself in the same cycle mm-hmm. and I'm trying to break Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. cycle. Mm-hmm. And hence why I was like, okay, maybe this I don't chase, I attract thing is not working out for me. I'm going to start sliding into DMs. Yeah. Start sliding. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. to see if, if it works better or worse. And it did. I mean, one guy never read my DM and then the that other happens. said, yeah, I mean, it does. Yeah. I'm still waiting for Lauren to read my first DM. That's right, okay. right. Yeah. No, really. So we worked together. Um, okay. Previously, but different relationships. Let's define that. Yeah, there was what? some like layers between that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. other relationships. Like, hey, but Lauren. then, like a couple years later, he saw me on Raya. Mm. Heard of it? 
I am on it. Wait, oh wait, no, hang, hang on. I got it mixed up. Yeah, no, saw me on Raya, DM me on Instagram. I, I did missed you. it. I did a you. And then oh, I right. matched on Hinge and messaged on Hinge. It took us three apps to read Oh it. my. Even though we God. already had each other's phone numbers and emails from yeah. work stuff. Wow. I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I had your payment information. Yeah. yeah. So that just shows like when it's, if it's meant to be, it's meant yeah. to be. Yeah. Like, I just like firmly believe that like if a guy is interested, they'll figure it out. Mm hmm. Right. Like, That's period. what I'm saying. That's why it's like, like fucking send your Wordle score. If you're interested, send your Wordle send score. Send your Wordle score. And yeah. I think it's, a, I think, I think maybe one of my issues is I make it too easy for another person. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, you are, you're just, you, you'll get everything from me maybe without giving. But I like hate that we up. even have to like think I that. Know. You know what it's, I mean? I like, I don't just, no, no, it's not that make, no, no, no. That's, you're blaming yourself for a thing that is very much in right. somebody else's ability right. to either I can't believe I missed my fucking oh, no, world no, sports no. day to send you. I'm right? not blaming right. Chris. I'm saying that no, I'm blaming I'm them for not. not I'm, I'm refusing to allow Chris to blame yeah, himself. I was blaming yes, Chris yes, 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 a little yes, bit. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you were hating Chris. Chris. We were on Team Chris there. Mm. Right, right. Mm. But we need to be back to Team Chris. Right. At what point in time did we just make this the new Bachelor? Me? Yeah. Um. Right now. Yeah, I say I say we go this through. We go through. <laughs> this is a lot more applicable to real life at this point, right? Everyone's gonna be able to go. I understand that game. Wait, do they have a gay bachelor? They, they do, tried, right? But the issue is, all every contestant will just hook up with each other. Oh. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just. It, I see. I see. Right. Every. Hmm. Every like producing that show was very difficult. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think they did like one season of it. I can't <laughs> remember what it was. Well, called. It was like, a, wasn't it men and women? But they were all like bisexual or gay. Was, oh. That was a different show. There was um, there was like Finding Prince Charming. Was oh an all yes, gay yes, 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 yes. Um, I and remember hearing I think about it that. just didn't really work because everyone was just fucking each other. Yes, mm. and also uh, I. Yeah, it was just it. It wasn't really as thought out. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't. It wasn't working. We should have it, but more like Bachelor in Paradise style, where right. it's like everyone's just there's there's not one person everyone's like Ooh. going for, but it's like multiple. There's a lot yeah. of different because that's mm -hmm. actually just like what Fire Island in the summer is like. Right. 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 I've seen a lot of <laughs> the yeah. in unison. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I, a lot right. of my friends right. that go to Fire Island, I see the like the behind it, like the close friends from Fire Island. I go. Wow, that's a good time. Also, Bachelor in Paradise starts tomorrow. Amazing. There mm -hmm. it does. Mm -hmm. okay. Love. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't love Great. it. Great. Don't, don't love it. For, it. The, for the straights, I know. Yeah, yeah, it is for, yeah, the, it's for straights. the straights. I haven't really watched it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I I think I I guess I've started creating my own bachelor by sliding into the DMs okay. and just being like, I'm not putting all of my eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. I also mm. like always consistently publicly say how into Jonathan Bailey I am from Bridgerton. Yes. Yeah, but yes, he's never yes, acknowledged yes, 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 yes. me. And but as it stands, where are we at right now? We have we've not gotten anything back. Wait, but how, is he a how social media you? user? Like Is relatively, he like he's pretty, he, he posts mm. on Instagram. He's actually a big Does viewer. He? If you just want to like grab more glass and say hi. There he is. Yeah. Is he gay? Yes. And so everyone thought that that engagement photo up at the top yeah. was him being engaged. But that is from when he did the revival of Company on the West End in London. Mm. And people just are not doing their research. Revival but as a company. theater kid, yeah. I know. Okay. But look at him. Wow. I mean, that's adorable. Yeah, I mean, everyone does say he looks exactly like my ex-boyfriend, so I guess I have a type. But I'm not mad about having a type. <laughs> if you are taller, if you have facial hair uh -huh. and brown hair, that's like half the world. <laughs> I immediately mean, just like, I was like, <laughs> Did, but not not. Did we just get a, a, a full time oh. third member of our podcast. This is Whoa, so exciting. you're accepted. Yeah, <laughs> I'm lightheaded. That's a good offer. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Yeah, that's kind of like I do. I do have a type, but I'm trying to break out of that mm. because it hasn't been working. Oh, just go with it. Yeah. Whatever makes you also, happy. I think as long as you're dating like different, like I think whatever someone looks like obviously is like great and you're attracted to them. But I think it's the insides of people have to keep changing as right. you date new people. Right. That yeah. sounds like a little gory, but I like the sexual is what it sounded like. The insides. I just mean that like, like I the, dated, like if there was a type A Jeremy and a type B mm -hmm. Jeremy, like I want to date the type A Jeremy. Right. Well, don't Lost. you say, you said in a previous podcast, he is type A, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, you're yeah. both pretty type A. Mm -hmm. We're both pretty type A for which sure. Is and great. not chill. Not chill. not chill. I not would say chill. that I'm definitely less chill. Because I was communicative. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, yeah, we're on the internet. We're on the internet. Yeah. Anyone who's on the internet and like, I honestly, I think successfully on the internet is mm -hmm. likely not chill. I totally agree. Like we are so neurotic. There are so many things oh God, going through yes. our brains at all times. Yes. And we're consistently like, 
reading, seeing opinions about us against our own will. Oh my God, like, yeah. How do you how be chill under to be those chill? circumstances? Well, you also, can't. Th sometimes my coworkers will say something just so ridiculous and I'm like, you would not last a moment on the internet. Right. You would just oh, be- Oh, like cancelable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I go, oh, yeah. Here. Did you oh, hear yeah, it? No, no. You didn't hear it? Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think one of my things too is I think I get, a, you going back to our point earlier was like, sometimes I'm nervous about someone knowing too much about my content because, <gasps> yeah. because I, I'm sure you both know this, like me as a creator and me as a person, are we're different people. Mm -hmm. Like I am, that is me authentically, but like I don't live at that level of energy oh my God. 100% yeah. of the no. time. And yes. one of the guys I like went on dates with was like, oh, I was kind of like nervous to meet you because you seem like wild. And I'm like, the I'm the opposite of wild. Right. I'm an introvert. Like uh -huh. I sit at home and I cry about being lonely. Right. Like that's <laughs> where, and, <laughs> and I take photos of it and I play Wordle and I get sad if someone doesn't respond. Like that is my regular vibe. Yeah. But on the internet, I'm jumping on poles, I'm wearing croc heels mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm like flying coffee across the country. So like one would think like, oh my God, this guy is, he's high energy, high energy he's crazy. Yeah, right. And so sometimes like what, what goes through my head if someone isn't responding for four days or is slowly like not talking to me as much, I'm like, is it because they've like, now we follow each other on the apps and mm. they like, right, and they, they don't the like my content jumping. and it's the like, it's much. annoying yeah. to them or something like that. Mm. Wow. Like I get, I, because most of, I would say any crushes I've had follow me on Instagram and maybe not TikTok. Mm. I get nervous about reposting an, a TikTok to Reels because reels? I'm like, yeah, you're like, this performed well on TikTok and all of my girlies <laughs> liked it on there. But what if one person <laughs> thinks it's a little weird? And I'm like, why am I, why am I, adjusting who I am on the internet for one person. Also, who, it's like, if that piece of content is going to get 10 million views on both, you're like, but that one person. But that one person who, yeah. again, probably doesn't remember my name. Like they're not, uh, it's, it's, it's wild. Uh, I think you're really hard on yourself. Yeah. And that I am. Yeah. And yeah. That really I hard am. on yourself. And that's, what, and that's what I'm working on. Okay. In therapy. <laughs> um, dating yeah. you a bit. Just yeah. dating you. Yeah. yeah. Loving yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Lots of love. That's really, that's beautiful. Like, and I think that's what I try to find when I am having those moments of like laying on my couch, watching a movie and I'm appreciative of it and mm -hmm. being like being alone. I'm like, ah, oh, this is, it's, it's so nice to, uh, you know, in my last relationship coming home, there was like tension. Oh, like I yeah. didn't, I didn't feel good about being in my apartment. And right. that's like, that is something I never want to go back to. No, it'll you sucks. need like your, your space to like yeah. de-escalate and like take... refresh. Not to exactly. mention, not to get too literal, but you did just get a new couch. <gasps> I did. Oh my God, Chris just got a cloud couch. I just got a oh. cloud couch. I, yeah. I have yet to um, experience it in yeah. that home, but I can't wait. I will oh say, my God. I think our sex life took an immediate dive. Nose dive, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, with dive. the cloud couch. After yeah. the cloud, because yeah. it was like, oh, it's not. You don't, it's too comfortable, yeah. it's too comfortable. for physical activity yeah. like that. Also, like we both, we both want to sit in a corner because there's little side tables there. So it's like, if you of have course. a snack and a beverage, now you're like, like 10 feet, feet apart. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. But I, at the end of the day, it's like, I, I think it balances itself out it in some way. Yeah. It's like, yeah. maybe the, maybe the sex life took a, a slight dip, but at what cost of something being at enhanced? Right. At what gain? At what gain? Mm -hmm. Also, like when you have a dog, you don't really have sex on the couch. No, that would be a, a group activity. Yeah, that's a group activity that no, no one's trying to sign up. Yeah, no. yeah. I've recently yeah. Fe felt like re-virginized. Oh, like it is a just, again. it is just <gasps> sewn shut at this point. Wow, there has it hasn't seen the light of day. Born again virgin. Okay, born, born again, again virgin. Have you guys seen that thing on TikTok where people tan their holes? Yes, all of them. I knew yes, you would. Yes. I knew you would. Jeremy has no idea what you're talking about. I could see and that. I want to make sure you, that you said tan their holes. Their oh, holes. Their I holes. mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Need I explain? No, I. I Pull it up. I what saw it on the. In fact, you probably can't. I don't understand. We might get demonetized platform. here. We might get demonetized. Do you want me to do this? Like, I know this is my job, but should they do like, yeah. No, I mean, they, they, they're they not showing us the holes, but they'll be like, um, the. They're kind I of, love the live reenactment. Yeah, uh -huh. they're yeah. So it's the like it's kind of like here, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and they yeah. are just Ooh. you're getting yeah. like you're quite flexible. Yeah, well, they're getting um because apparently that area of the body never gets vitamin D, <laughs> and, oh. it's, and it's a really important area to get vitamin D. <laughs> and are you by so, yourself? Do you have any help with anything? You need to kind of be a little lower and like you just <laughs> oh. you hold this position. Okay, I think for about only like. I want to say 10 minutes because- Yeah, I think it's 10 to 15. Is, because that 10 is, minutes? Well, listen, 
Uh, oh, you're thinking that's a long time. Yeah, right? it's a long fucking time. Oh, well, no. I mean, honestly, if you if you got in this position, it's like pretty comfortable. Because if I get in that position, I'm never getting out of that position. Okay. That's He's just, a little older than you. I'm stuck right. there. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Also, so, did you know that when you Google your age, you come up as- I'm 76. Yeah, 76. Yeah, Ooh. I am. <laughs> Why is that? Well, <laughs> great, Who is great your Botox doctor? Um, I need to know. Whoever does, no, so there is. Just yank that thing, just yank it up again. Mm. One more. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Why not grab this and do this. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Wait. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah that's and then it. Just, and then just push it around. And then just write it. Like slowly to I, fall. When I tell you how many like places and things that mic has been between you and now her. Have you ever tried to put it in your mouth? Twice. And how was it? I nailed it. I have a massive mouth. Like if I gave blowjobs, huh, I would do it great. Okay, but you great. never would. I don't. I think I'd gag. Right. Yeah. I think it's a demonetized conversation, isn't it? We yeah. Can, can you, we, oh, you would be shocked. Okay. At, if, yeah. If, right. if, if this is what gets us demonetized, yeah, like, well, yeah. I have done that before. You haven't really gagged what? or put the mic. In your <laughs> you just said born again virgin. You just lied. Oh everybody. my god. Yeah. Well. Okay, an old version of you. Okay. Can, can I try? Go don't, for it. Whatever. Yeah. Anyone yeah. mind? Does anyone want to try? Do you have a big mouth? Oh, well, that's quite impressive. <laughs> you can take that home with you. I just start to be like, oh, oh. But you can't really, you can't really like phonate a vowel. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, what's that oh. sound? Oh. <laughs> that was pretty far. How far did I get down? You did uh, almost all. Far. Go ahead. Oh my god. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. You know, that's okay. I, I almost got down the full thing. Yeah, no, that, was, that was quite impressive. Once again, my DMs are open. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, you know, we're starting the podcast there. That's going to be first. That's, that's the first the clip TikTok. in the YouTube video. That's the TikTok clip right there. As it should be. And I can't wait to see that circulate. And then I will have no shortage of dates after that one. Just kidding. Oh Everyone's going to run. I was gonna, no, if I was a oh, guy. That was quite impressive. If I was a, a, a super. You are? I, <laughs> You're a guy. Was a, it was a man that was looking for right. another man. For another man. Yeah. That would be a great first start. Hear that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, back okay, to stunning holes right. though. I yes. saw it on um bling, Stunning uh, Holes. Stunning holes. Stunning but holes. In Bling Empire, there were stunning holes because oh. she was feeling um I think she just wanted to get laid. And so she wanted, she, they were like, oh, well, we have to sun your holes to like yeah. to attract. Apparently it does wonders because once again, so I think what I was saying was like the sun never gets there. So it right. really, like it really absorbs the mm. vitamin D well. Your butthole. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or your other hole if you have them. Mm -hmm. um, so it really yeah. kind of like you're, you're able to, and I, I think it's something about chakras too. Like you're really open. The butthole chakra. To the world. I mean, think about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Famously, the butthole, the butthole My chakra. Favorite chakra. Think about it. Like you are, you are spreading to the world something that people call the area where the sun never shines. Right. You are shining the sun. Oh my right god. Well, and you do it alone, or do you do it with people? You can do I've, it with a partner. I've only seen people do it with partners. It seems like a I've only ever experience. seen it. Yeah, together. So if someone walked in on me Catch alone, our next doing hang. that. Yeah. Right. Right. I I think that'd be it for me. Of your butthole? Yeah. In the air. Yeah, no, just if I, if you walked in tomorrow. Just seeing you as like a large white hairy man thinking about you in that position is absolutely hysterical. I don't know if we could ever have sex after that, to be that's honest. That's my thing. I just don't <laughs> have, I can't expect you to have sex with me after that. Well, what if you did it together? <laughs> that would be better. Like, what if it were a group activity? It's just that if I was looking straight directly down in his butthole, I think in like broad yeah. daylight, like I think that's too much. I don't want right. to see it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't expect you to want to see yeah, it. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. Because I mean, I guess my 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 next thought is like, people aren't really going down there often. Well, I, I mean, I no. don't know. But we have right. a, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, this is why you know, I'll clear it up for you right now. <laughs> clear the air. Um, the other times we like bring that up, and like our our straight couple friends are like, you don't ever just you never shove your arm up there, and I'm like, shove mm. your arm up there. You've never had a, you've never even had a finger up your butt. I. Well, Lauren, you don't have to. No, you, no, no, no. We'll talk about okay. it. So one time we were in the bathtub. Yeah, right. We're very, there's few and things that are off limits. That's not one of them. Okay. Yeah. So we were in the bathtub, and we have one of those like kind of like egg shaped ones that are pretty big, and you can yeah. fit kind of two people in there. Kind of like a standalone tub. Yeah, yeah. exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And so we were in it um, on opposite sides, facing each other. I think we've told this around the pod before. Definitely. And it is one of Jeremy's most traumatic moments of his entire life. Yeah, both well, relive it. And so, like, I mean, you know, like legs are tangled and stuff. Like, it's he's six four. You know, right. a, a large man. He is tall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I am readjusting myself in the tub and I accidentally slip down <laughs> just like a little scoop. My toe goes directly. <laughs> 
<laughs> directly up the witch. <laughs> directly. This is very important. Witch toe. The big toe. <laughs> Directly. And when you go from <laughs> nothing to the toe, <laughs> and we and uh, where no one's lubed up no. or anything, there no. was no warming up. There's no floor water. Play. It's not actually <laughs> that great of a lubricant. <laughs> 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 Can just, we just talk about the odds that just, it would take for that to happen exactly? Like <laughs> it's a small, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna assume uh, as someone who has never been penetrated anally, that's a tight hole. <laughs> so to have, to have a big toe very quickly shoved up there, my God. Oh, I can just, I, I frequently describe my first time as like, it felt like a baseball bat was being oh. slowly put up my rectum yeah. with no lube and yeah. there was lube on it. So it was a very different experience. So oh. I can't imagine the bath bomb filled water shoved up my asshole. Yeah. Let's sit with that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Would everyone mind if we just, if we, we sat. just let that, just, <laughs> can we just let let that let's marinate in that moment, mm. if you will. Um, okay. And so, okay. So I almost committed murder. I almost, right. Yeah, I, yeah. I did. Oh, that I was, almost lost my life. So that was tough. That was a, for that you was as a, a tough couple. moment. We really had to overcome that moment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, right. I don't think we've really gone through the therapy moment for it. Yeah. I don't yeah, think we, we, it was a moment where I go, I need to leave <laughs> right. your presence right. for a okay. while. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, you know, as someone, I guess, who's gotten a big toe up their ass, I can say I haven't even done that before. See? So good for you. Yeah. You, are you you do have a little bit of experience to be able to go for the sunning um the the sunning method I, of things. The thing is, I think so too. I, you know what though? I, you know what I'm picturing though is that just because like I wish you wouldn't. You, <laughs> well, we're all picturing we're it. We're all now. picturing it. Yeah, In I fact, know. every viewer is yeah, probably as well. Not picturing it because <laughs> like so you're you're That's a lot of people. white, obviously. I confirmed. And have you you haven't seen Twilight? Have you seen Twilight? Uh, We've talked about this before. Oh, I know no. where you're going with this. Is that I'm picturing just his like bright Blanche white asshole just like sizzling, glistening, even glistening perhaps. and sizzling yeah. in the sun because it's Twilight? never seen. Yeah, because like yeah, that's vampires. like Edward's whole thing. His whole thing. Well, like yeah. vampires can't really be in the sun. Well, I got that part right. Yeah, yeah. No, so but like your with, hole like, is a vampire, is what she's saying. Yeah, your hole is a vampire. Uh, it, might, it might be. That's why we shouldn't fuck with it. I think we should try. Really, in, in the sun? You, really, we have a pretty like secluded backyard. There Not that secluded. What? Not that secluded. We do have security cameras though, so I will roll the footage back for everyone. For roll the footage yeah. back. Anyway, I think you. Guys, this is a you guys thing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna support. I'm gonna say you guys want to eat, like. Oh okay, well, you food. think on that. You, you think, think on, on it. it. Yeah. You, you, you on that. once again marinating it. Yeah. So, I, Sitting it. Speaking of uh, the things that you watch on TikTok, what else? Oh yeah, are our new viewing? thing is like, what what, what kind I of talk watch. are you on? Yeah. What's, oh my God, talk? I don't even know. Like there are so many different vibes that I go through often. Right now mm -hmm. I'm on Miami Choir Boys TikTok. Have you heard of that? No. You haven't? Miami Choir Is it possible Boys. to like, okay. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's this group of, uh, well, when is this episode coming out? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, okay. So I think it'll still yeah, be, yeah, yeah. people will know what, what, what I'm talking about here. Miami Choir Boys? Yeah. Okay. <gasps> so there you go. There you go. Um, give us just that. The, yeah, the first video works. And then just click on the duet. So these boys are going viral. It's a video from like 2002 of the this Jewish oh. choir. <laughs> this isn't where I thought it was going. Keep going. This is not where I thought it was going. Nar, no, no, no. And Nar. Let's Ready? just, let's take it in. Beat, drop, go! Not what I live. thought was coming. Oh my no, that's god! Live. That's <gasps> live. Those boys are stars, and so people have been using that sound. People have looked up the full concert. The boy. People have where found are they the now? boys I now. Need, I need like a where are they now? Um. So people have found David, who's the third boy. He Hershowitz. Hershowitz. Yeah, right. Hershowitz. Right. 
Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Knows how to read. Mm -hmm. um, well, so wouldn't pe be me. <laughs> <laughs> people could not be me. People have found David. He has a TikTok account and he's recreated his songs <gasps> a few times. People have watched the entire concert. People are pulling up different clips of it. Like it has become... Um, it, it has become very huge. I love the internet. This is like the, the most ridiculous shit ever. I love I, this it. Is, I want to say like a, a trend like this, mm -hmm. I feel like happens like once a quarter. I mean, mm -hmm. they're going to bring back mm -hmm. Alter Boys on Off-Broadway if, if if they could do anything Oh here. my God. Right, exactly. <gasps> yes. It reminds me of 13, the musical. Uh, yeah. You know that one? Wow. Yeah. yeah. It, that where Ariana Grande got her start famously. Yeah. Um, if, lest everyone forget. Um, but yeah, I, I've recently gotten on that K -pop TikTok. K-pop is over. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, this is an orthodox pop. Song from now on. Oh, I mean, pop. tell me that wasn't a bop. That like, was a bop. The, they, way that, the way the drop came, that was so good. But they sounded good. They sounded good. Like, I, I was shocked when you said they was actually live. Because no, yeah, they're good. I don't know what environment they could possibly be singing in, but for all of them to not suck. Yeah, you, there's always like boys. There's always yeah, somebody there's always right. Always, right. Like, oh, well, your dad probably no, they owns, found the best of the owns best. the troop. Oh, there's David now. That's David. Let's run it back. Doing the duet. Like so when David's part comes up, he'll start singing. So oh my god, this, little, this is him. This is him. This is the icon himself. Yeah. Oh. Choreography. It really is. It's all in the production. Give it to us, Cam. Pressure which is coming. I need more. I wanted more. I wanted more. I wanted more. You know, he's like, he's in bed. I wanted more. He's in bed. There could be more. Yeah. I wanted there. more. Yeah. For sure. Wow. I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Because David, as a child, mm -hmm. He's serving. He's serving. Yeah, he he's really giving. was. He was giving and he was yeah. not giving. Yeah, and, and I think he's, you know, perhaps- Giving less. Lost some of his steam, but I do believe we can bring it back. I think so too. I think he can- I, I mean, if he's like hyped enough that he's down to like get on the trend, right. he obviously is excited I about mean, just it. imagine being these boys of being like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, we had this like random choir back in 2002 right. and now in 20, 20 years later, Perhaps like, it is now. Do you think they just like all didn't make Billy Elliot and we're like, we'll just do this boys troop together? Right. Something like that. Right. Perhaps. Like how, how come <laughs> they got all the talent yeah. all together in Miami? You have a little bit of like Broadway knowledge in you, it seems. Okay. So this is my favorite fun fact to tell every guest that doesn't know. Was on Broadway. Jeremy, did you ever watch the show The Sing Off on NBC? Yeah, the, 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 um, Acapella, the acapella show. We didn't have Hebrew acapella. So but. Jeremy was not only a frat president in Kentucky, but he was also the star of the Acoustic Cats on NBC was it, live. Wait, the sing off was was your group in season one or four. season four? four. Then I may have missed it. Yeah, because I did watch season one. I remember I was really into it. Um, I'm well now. I'm going to watch it back. Season who was season one? I don't know. Yeah. It's been a while. Wow. <laughs> it, How many, was your much. season last season? How many seasons? No, there was one after our, ours, wow. and it was the you know, like you know, and just and that's that'll be it. Yeah, it's yeah. my favorite. I run around telling everyone that's that Jeremy wild. was in Pitch Perfect, basically. Okay, so you have some, you do have musical knowledge. Oh my god, in voice you. of an actual angel! It is it makes me irate because he never sings. Why I not? do sing, just not the things you want me to sing. When Jeremy used to love me at the very beginning of a relationship, when we were like right. obsessed with each other, right. when I used to love now. you, yeah. right, right, <laughs> and he shoved a toe up my ass. <laughs> Yeah. And now, things are never and the now same. now we that <laughs> one's tough. Mm. He he sang me, he sang and recorded a cute little song for me. Yeah, I did. And what was it called? Oh no, it's just- um, She was like, I want you to sing this song yeah. for this. Oh, what song yeah. was it? Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, um, fucking what's it called? What's it called? Um, it's Elvis, right? Um, Unchained oh, no, Melody? Uh, no, I Can't Help Falling In Love. Yeah, Can't Help Falling In Love. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. So classic. Good. Yeah, and yeah. The, the, the Casey Musgraves version that just came out, quite beautiful. Oh, exactly. I haven't heard that one yet. It's It was in the Elvis movie. Yeah, did you ever yeah. see it? Oh yes, yes, yeah. yeah. We actually just watched that. You know, I I would like to do. Oh my god, there he is, far right. Oh Jesus! Any other photo? Um, <laughs> can you like just like and height? So I know that's and you. <laughs> uh, that's you all the way on the end. That he's like, Chris. is is it? <laughs> do I claim uh, it's not me? That's no. you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's wait, before he found no, an LA what? an LA hair right. hair stylist. What's the age difference between that and now? 10, oh, 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. I'm okay. going to send you so many links today. Please do. Can, Every single one yeah. of them. But I used to love Broadway a lot. Like in an, in an old world of mine, 
that's what I would have gone to do. Well, you know, I, I, my BFA is in musical theater. Right. Chris, I told you it would be we really- We did so much yeah, homework no, on you, Chris. Oh, yeah. like, like, we haven't even we, talked- oh, we didn't, I know, we've been talking about assholes and toes. I know, and, but that's the good this stuff. Whole, that, that is the good stuff. Because I put I, this whole mic in my mouth for, for you. <laughs> I actually, I was listening to your voice earlier. I was like, ooh, it's like a lower Gavin Creel. Was oh, what I felt like. my God. That's the nicest thing you could say to any and theater like, kid ever. And I, <laughs> I say that because I know how much I love Gavin Creel. He's another one where like, I would, I would date him. I would Gavin go Creel, feral, please. Oh yeah, perhaps. can I get a, can I get Though a photo? I, I do think he's in a relationship. I, yeah. Um, I he's so. just like, and it's, it's, you yes. You do have a type. It's the face, but like his voice, voice. is just unbelievable. Oh my God, it's butter. Yep. It is oh. the most, it's one of the most beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Um, yeah, so he's, he's a good one for sure. Um, so I really, I, wow, I do appreciate that. He's mm. who I try to emulate. I feel like singing wise. Well, um, great. Are you going to do more singing content? Yes. So my friend Shree, who I'm always singing yeah, in the bathtub with. In the with, bathtub with. She's amazing. She's, well, she is just like on on another level. Mm -hmm. She is so good. And she's starting to write original music. So like <laughs> be on the lookout for that. I, can, I can't wait to hear it. As I mean, I've heard some of it, but I can't wait for it to be out. But we are hoping to one, write together <gasps> at some point. Can you write? No, like <laughs> she can. No, this is the thing with musical theater. No, she's good at she's good at the music yeah. stuff, and I I've been like throwing lines Lyricist. to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I see, I see. So um, so that would be our kind of like our musical partnership. So she's about to move to LA, and we're going to hopefully continue <gasps> doing Fine. a lot more singing stuff together. Well, LA's Broadway scene needs some work. It does. And it when does. I say needs some work, I mean it's barely in existence. Like right. Chicago outpaces it. 10 to one. Yeah. Uh, you could do it as for a living always in Chicago. LA yeah, yeah, yeah. Difficult. Yeah. It's, which it's, is weird. Right. I, I guess it's because there is such a focus on film and television here mm -hmm. that it's- it's just, Is there a focus or is there just, there's not even a focus. Yeah. It's like I entertainment. Mean, the only the only place I feel like you can really, I guess Chicago, yes, but Chicago is also a relatively like, uh, is a cheaper city yeah. than New York as well. But the only place where you can really make a living off of theater is in New York. And even then well, no. you have to be like My one of the principles. Everyone's always told me you make way better money just always doing the tour and just mm -hmm. not having to keep a spot. Just right. get your money. Like as a tour paid for. also, yeah. Your living situation's paid for, your yeah. food is paid for, all of the above. But like on Broadway in New York, if you're just like an ensemble member, it can be yeah. like- it can be tough to, I mean, you're able to support yourself and your basic needs, but it's not like- You have roommates. I think a lot of, yeah. And yeah. a lot of people have this idea that like, oh, once I'm on Broadway, I'm set and it'll be amazing. And like, that's just not the truth. No. And what's even crazier is even getting into that position of having this job that only pays for your basic needs is extremely hard. I like- think, I think of ensemble, you have to have some of the like most well-rounded jobs. You have to have some of the best skills because yeah. you're also covering a lead. Most likely you're dancing, you're singing, you're acting you're doing literally you're doing the work that like the leads are are not really called right. in for and they're getting paid 10 times more than you yeah. essentially like weekly i think there was a stat i mean this is obviously the top of the line but like bet midler and like hugh jackman they were oh. on broadway where they get paid like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a week plus some ticket sales yeah. oh my God. which is Ooh. wild Nuts. like that is Nuts. that is a lot of money but then do you you're, think Leah Michelle's making that in Funny Girl? I'm sure she's making a good amount, but I'm sure she's making less and she accepted less because she needs, she's in yeah. her humble era. <laughs> um, True <laughs> that. I'm <sh> like, <laughs> I'm sure she was ready because one, people already didn't expect her to replace someone mm -hmm. because of- She's in a redemption story right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. So she's just, I think she's, I think she knows she kind of just has to Take say it. yes yeah. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and show this different side of her. But- um, you know, while these leads are getting that amount of money, you have the ensemble members or the swings or the people yep. in, the, in the crew in the back making like 2000 ish a week before taxes, oh yeah. leaving you with about 1000 a week, which is like, you know, that's a job that, you know, you can, it's just tough. We're, we have, we have to remember that all of these people are living in New York city, which yeah, is one of the like, most expensive yeah, the cities in the world. If you're making a thousand dollars a week in, a lot of like middle America, it, you could you're, be living a very different life. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I'm not saying by any means like a thousand dollars a week or 2000 is like a horrible amount of money and that's right. crazy. But like, mm -hmm. I, I think there's this illusion about being on Broadway. That's like, you are living big. And also, I think- There's an end to your, like your job will 
end right. often. And then you have to find a new exactly. one. And I think it's just, it, it's also the disparity is just unfair that these huge stars are getting paid this, yeah. these behemoth amounts of money while as we like the ensemble members or the crew are living with roommates mm-hmm. and like hope like needing their paycheck to get in. I think yeah. that was an issue with the recent Broadway show where their paychecks didn't come in on time oh, and people were like, well, I'm not going into work because yeah. I like literally eight shows a week, no pay eight <laughs> shows no. a week. You imagine doing the same like show yeah, every yeah. night, mm. sometimes twice a day. It's like it is. A, I know it's a lot of people's dream jobs. It's my dream to do at some point as well. But mm. like eight shows a week is yeah a lot. Brutal. That's killer. A Brutal. lot to be t- right. And then and then you think about like tours. Yes, you're making a lot of money, but a lot of tours go on non-union these days, okay. which means they don't have to pay you a certain minimum. So you could be paid some some tours. They'll pay them like. Two hundred to five hundred dollars a week. Oh, okay. oh, there, there are people that are make, that are crushing it in tours, and right. there are people that are not crushing it. So that the people who are crushing it can make their money. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. It's just it. There's a lot of talk about this in the theater community right now yeah. because it's like it's uh, everyone obviously wants to do theater and is still in love with it, but Fucked. there's a big like pay disparity yeah. throughout right. all of these because producers are making bank on these shows like they're th- all the people at the top are literally like going back to their penthouses and all of that stuff mm-hmm. I mean, and then the people who are literally helping the show run who if they left the show would be nothing yeah are having a hard time supporting themselves and that's just like i mean it goes th- these kinds of economies are present throughout like all Everything. industries yeah. like it i mean it happens with influencers too you talk to your friend you like i think it's important for friends to talk to friends because one friend might be offered a really oh, shitty deal God, for a brand yes. deal then someone else is like oh well i don't have to do another brand deal for another year because right. i'm yeah. getting bank on this and i think that i think like industries kind of rely on us not talking about this oh, yeah. 100%. because they're like, oh, well, th- if if you don't ask what your friend is getting mm-hmm. made on a certain brand deal, mm-hmm. then you won't know and then it'll be fine. Like I I literally, yeah. it just happened with one of my friends um, where she was offered a brand deal. I was offered the same one and like the, it was, it, it was just very clear that they yeah. were trying to get us like to not talk about it and be yeah. ch- like cheap about things. Mm. And we both ended up not doing it because we were like, yeah, that's fucked up of this that's brand good, to try yeah, to, that's yeah, but, but if you say, but if you band together, yeah. these brands or these Broadway producers or the, your manager at Starbucks, like mm. down to the, uh, any level of industry, the buyer. Yeah, exactly. Will not be able to, I've been seeing so many videos on my for you page about Starbucks workers, like walking out yeah, on their jobs. I and I well think that's so powerful because again, like all of the power is in our hands. Mm-hmm. If we're together on this, I don't know how we got here, but I'm literally yeah. just like, we're right. talking about economies and all no, of this stuff. So like but, this basically happened to me. Like, so I started YouTube in 2012. Right. I've been in it for a really long time. And I- yeah, You're an OG. Geriatric. I, you know, I'm geriatric basically. Well, I, I, wouldn't call, I wouldn't say that. Um, it's okay, I'm geriatric. Okay, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Chris was like in, in junior high when you were getting started. Literally, oh my 2012? god. 2012? 2012. I was in eighth grade. Junior um, high. Starting I have never high felt so <laughs> decrepit in my Which entire Which is crazy because life. like, you know, the, you know the social media and creator world. Like I, it is young. Like <laughs> I, as a, I as a 24 year old mm. going to certain events feel like the oldest one there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I TikTok's mean like the 16 year old TikTokers are, that. yeah, there's there's many events that I'm like, oh, I just, I know that I won't fit into the demographic there. Right, right. Um, so when I was in Toronto though, I saw um, an article in the uh, Toronto newspaper about a YouTuber who was like, um, it didn't say like how much she made, but she said that she had bought her own condo in Toronto. Right. And at that time, condos would have been between like, you know, three hundred and seven thousand dollars And we were like getting similar amounts of views on YouTube, which right. was again, very low at the beginning. It was my first, second year of making YouTube videos. But I looked at my paychecks and I was like- Very different. Oh, I, I can maybe pay rent. I right. can, you know what I mean? Like I'm maybe close to going like financially independent for my parents, but there is not a fucking chance that I'm buying a $500,000 right. condo. I was like, so what does, what is she doing that I don't know? And so I messaged her on, you used to be able to message people on YouTube and send messages Oh there, my God. Which is so I was weird. not there when I know. that was happening. It was OG times. And so anyway, so we connected and she like gave me the whole rundown. I realized that I was being absolutely like, 
so right. violently taken advantage of in, um, so basically there used to be uh, YouTube networks where they would lock you in at a specific right. dollar rate. Yeah, mm. for every single view you got, it was the exact same dollar rate. And so whether they made more or less than you, you got paid that. Mm -hmm. But chances are, especially if they lock you in at that rate for multiple years, you're earning them 10X that. Mm -hmm. And so I yeah, found out right. that I was getting just like, it was brutal. Eventually and so, that, that worked the other way around, but yeah. Yeah, eventually it worked the other way around, yeah. right? There was, there was a <laughs> yeah. face there, yeah. There was a quick face. But anyway, so like after talking to her, I literally within probably the next six months, financially my life changed. Yes. Because I was like, oh my fucking God, I had no idea. And it's just because it's so like hush hush. And also too, like back then, like nine years ago, there weren't that many YouTubers, especially in like Canada as well too. So like right. go even one step smaller. Right. Yeah. But yeah. It, in California, they just actually, uh, passed a law where when you offer a new job in California, mm -hmm. you have to put the band salary wise that mm -hmm. is associated with that job. Like post oh, it like publicly. Interesting. Which is yeah. like a massive shift. Yeah. Because when somebody who needs a job mm -hmm. is asked, so what is the like lowest amount that you people to accept to like move forward with this this process right. and you need that job? You come up with the like, okay, bare bones, this would like, yeah, yeah, I yeah, could yeah. stay alive versus this is what it's actually going to be worth my time mm -hmm. to give you 50 hours my week for three years. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, another point on the like OG stuff. So 1660 Vine. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah, right, so, right, right. 1660, 1660 Vine, right? Huh? Yeah, it just, it just it, they changed the name. Halfway. They changed they it? They changed it. I have some like copyright things. Oh wait, Hilarious. so what, what's it called? 1660. Oh, but it just what was it? It just can't be 1600. Got it. Okay, so have you ever been to 1600 Vine? And that's a real place. Cut this, cut this, cut this. Oh my God. Oh wait, what? my okay, God. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, okay, what? Okay, it, wait, so talk about what your 1660 Vine is for. <laughs> this, was a, this, was a, this was an independent film that I did this summer. Okay. That, um, Way cooler. Yeah, I mean, very fun. Yeah. It's like about social media yes. and there are like musical elements to it too. So um, I think they're like looking for a buyer for it right now. So it's like, you know. I, I saw the trailer. It looks so amazing. Yeah, it's fun. Who yeah. knows where the future of it is going to be? Okay. I mean, I went to school, uh, as I just said, I went to school for musical theater. Mm -hmm. So like acting is still in my like realm of things I want to do, but mm -hmm. I feel like I like, I don't know what, uh, not to go on a tangent right before we're going on no, another no, we'll come tangent. Back. We'll come back. Don't what, worry. What, when you started YouTube mm -hmm. or when you were like growing up before YouTube, did you have like another avenue that you were hoping to oh, go in no. before that? No, 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 got no. It, got it, got I it. have a degree in printing like paper. And oh my printing. God. Yeah. You want to know how often I use that? Zero. Zero. Right. That, that's not true. <laughs> you know the, the elasticity of paper. I do. But there you go. I have to print something in our house. This one does it. Right, right, yeah. right. Okay. And you went to school for per per uh, percussion. Percussion performance and vocal education. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Scholars, all well, of us in this then room. I, then I switched to business. No, he didn't graduate. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. That's He's got three and a half babe. years of degree. Appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Which, if you round, goes to zero. But no, so right. I, I had no yeah. other right. like aspirational goals in okay. terms of career. I just like in first university, I was like, fuck this program. This sucks. I'm yeah. like in school for printing. Right. Just started YouTube. And then by the time I graduated, I was like ready to go full time with YouTube. And so I got lucky. Wow. It like, worked wild. out. Yeah. That, yeah, that was really kind of like out. similar. I would say similar to my story. Not, I, it wasn't first year, but when the pandemic hit, junior year of college, mm -hmm. I started Fuck. TikTok. And I was like, um, I was just kind of making videos. And then the summer between junior and senior year, it started taking off. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, there's a fully, there's fully a different avenue that yeah. I could go in because I was really losing hope with musical theater. I was kind of like, the, as we were talking about before, the, the musical theater world, the acting world is so big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How the fuck are you supposed to stand out? Yeah. How am I supposed to get a job? Yeah. I didn't think I was very special or very good at any, I, I, like specifically good at any of the things. Um, and you have I'm, to be good enough at all have, of them. And you have to be good enough at all of them. Yeah. I was just like, I, there are too many, there's too much competition. Mm -hmm. Where were you? Um, what, was, what, what program? Berkeley College of Music. Yeah. Um, so I was in Boston. And I was just like, I, I was really ready to kind of give up on the whole thing. And then the pandemic hit and I was like, well, there's nothing else to do. And I started TikTok. And as that was happening, I was like, oh, wait, yeah. whoa, wait. People want to people want to hear something. I have to say, right. I guess, mm -hmm. like you kind of, so I kind of slowly found a new voice that I had there, and I feel like that has kind of really um, that I, I've had I've had blinders toward that direction recently yeah. of like 
not not just wanting to do TikTok for the rest of my life because I don't. That's you know that that would be tough to totally just continue making like those short movies every day. But yeah. like <laughs> I think I think there's so many different opportunities that can come from it. Like the friends I've been able to make and mm-hmm. being able to like. Um, do new business ventures with them as yeah. well totally. is so exciting. Like there's so many different- It just like opens doors to so many different people. Right, right. Yeah. And so like acting has, you know, I, I did this movie and I'm really exciting, excited about it and I do want to continue acting and stuff, but I feel like it's kind of taken a little bit of a side seat yeah, because I'm it. like, I'm having so much fun yeah. doing like, you know, doing some of the things that I've g- done with Megan Trainer totally. recently. Yeah, like that's huge. It, yeah, and being able to like go- Childhood bestie. Childhood bestie. <laughs> being able to go to like, she, her and Harry are on the same team. So being able to go to some of his shows and like mm-hmm. meet some of his team, I'm like- this, this is fucking like- uh, Also like you would, you, like you can only do that because of the TikTok like path that you build. You right. know what I mean? It's like, if you would, it's like- Yeah, yeah. and people, people frequently say like, well, if you want to be an actor, like you can't really be on social media in that way. I think it's mm-hmm. bullshit. I think that's I think it's bullshit, bullshit as well. I think it's like, well, no, I'm going to create my own path. And also we have already seen many. Like, also mm-hmm. question, did the person to tell you that have the ability to make you an actor? No. Right. Then why are we of course, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, that's always yeah. But people, the, there's, I think it's actually a lot of like actors themselves who will say yeah. that as right. well, because mm-hmm. I think one, they're not on social media in that way. So nope. they're like, this is just how it's working. And two, I think it's like easier to just kind of like compartmentalize me and like, oh no, you're, you're yep. in the TikTok lane, you're you in stay there. there. But I think, um, so yeah, I think it's like one, I don't think that's fully true. Oh God, what was I going to say? Um, we're talking about TikTok <laughs> and we're talking about- <laughs> Being an actor. Being an actor. And you know what too? I have so many like model musician friends that are literally required to do the social promotion behind That's all of I'm their saying. content. Yeah, so like, it's like everyone is being told to yeah. get on yeah. social. Yes. Musicians, uh-huh. actors, all of Like the amount of- of actors or musicians who will now reach out and be like, how do I do the TikTok thing? Right. Like, what yes. do I, and, and it's like, it's so interesting that um, people are saying, I can't go in that direction, right. but they are all trying to come in this exactly, direction. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, exactly. Like none of this stuff would have been happening if I was just like, okay, you know what? I have to like turn down my social media personality yeah. so I can be seen as more of a blank slate right. for- And slave away out auditions which is Which is not what I want to do. Yeah. At the end of the day, like I, I don't, I, I started, turning down self tapes that didn't feel like they were going to yeah. that th- didn't right. feel very me like because I do share myself on social media I know probably the first first role that I'm getting will be something pretty similar to me be- because right. people know me <laughs> And how fucking great would that be? To right. like that, be someone similar to yourself? That I can yeah. be someone similar to You're me. You're gonna nail it. And so I just kind of trust that I'm like, no, if I just continue feeding into these like alleys that are already giving me so much mm-hmm. back and exciting me so much. And like, I'm able to build this community online of people who are so amazing. And like, if I just stopped all of that and then I, it, it just would, it would completely derail everything that totally. I feel like I'm trying oh to God, no, the momentum share that, like, and be with people. Just like built over the last like couple of years is crazy. But right. I don't think that people know, like they see how they did it and they assume that that's the path. Right. And it's mm-hmm. not everybody's path. Mm-hmm. And you said a thing before that I'm like, I wanted to like push back on and I'm, I'm, I'm going to find this. Push time. back. Oh, no, here you, we go. no, you said you started doing like TikTok and you found this new voice. Yeah. I, and maybe that's true. I disagree. I think, and you know what? As you say that, I think you're right. Like, yeah. I think it yeah. was always my voice. This is always totally. who yeah. I have been. Like my friends say the same thing. They're like, yeah, mm-hmm. no, this is just but you. Everyone needs to hear that. Like some people are like, I don't, but I don't know how, I'm right. not talented. Like no one cares about this. It's like, no, no, no. People don't know that they, right. they, they would care about it. If yeah. they, I see these people all the time who are wildly talented on TikTok. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, we talk about this all the time. We're like, how can there be so many talented people? It's so crazy. As, like they just haven't been given the opportunity for people to go. To see. Holy shit. Yeah. You sound yeah. like that? Right. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are one, scared to even post in totally. the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, and, and two are just not sure how to find their niche or something right. like that. Or like trying all these different things to find their niche. And I'm like, you, you sh- just do what you love. Yeah. Because if you get into a niche of doing something that you don't yeah. actually enjoy, you will hate your life. And I know people who have done that. Who My career for like five years. Oh, boring. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you, I, I've seen it. I've, I did it too. I was, I was running a couple account and it was Same. destroying our relationships. Same. Yeah. Like it was just, it really ended up being 
much of the downfall. I mean, there were so many other elements, but that definitely wasn't helping. And I think it's like, if I, I, some of my friends who are like, and then I post something that I do enjoy or something else and people don't want to see it. And I'm like, well, yeah, because people are now just expecting the thing that you don't actually enjoy Mm -hmm. doing out of you. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you truly believe that what you love is good and should be seen, then fuck the views and just like keep sharing what you love because eventually hope, hopefully people will catch on. I remember I saw a comment after my breakup where someone was like, I've never seen someone be able to pivot a uh, being like a come up as a relationship account mm-hmm. and now having people still care about what you're doing on your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I, I think, and, and that was never, I wasn't like methodical about it. I was like, how do I? Hey, what's my new brand? How do I what's now my new share? Brand? How so do you, I now? You were sitting going, why isn't he fucking texting me back? <laughs> yeah. Fuck off TikTok. <laughs> I was literally like, I there was no like, <laughs> okay. And now I mastermind my way to get people to care about me. It was like, no, okay. The thing I was doing relationship wise is no longer going to happen. Mm-hmm. So let me just continue sharing me because I feel like I do have some something to share on my own. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the, there was a time where after sh- sharing our couple stuff and, and then it was just me, the views dropped. But then I kept sharing me and being like, no, I know there are people who want to see this. I know I might be quirky and relatable in some <laughs> sort of way. And I'm going to find a way to share that. And it, it does happen because yeah, yeah, yeah. you just stick to yourself. And I feel like people see that and they relate to that. And yeah. now I have like a whole new audience of people who don't even know that I started doing this with a boyfriend. Yeah, 100%. And I think that's like so special. And I'm still able to relate to them in the way that I share my authentic self. And now mm-hmm. I'm sharing my dating journey. And we, mm-hmm. need, we can yeah. all go through that together. Yeah. And all of all of the other things, I think it's actually like, going through that hard time of the breakup was ended up being one of the best things for me personally in my life that could have ever happened. Which is like, tell that to your you know self the day of, you'd be like, fuck off, yeah. let me exactly. be sad. But hindsight is better than 2020. Right, I was so scared of what it was gonna create. I was very sure that, okay, everything's going to just fall apart and I'm, I'm going to go back to, I, I have to go back home and like, mm-hmm. it's just, I'm, nothing's ever gonna be the same. And it's not, and it's it's not exactly, exactly. And I think like I, that's become my advice to a lot of my friends or anyone who's going through a situation or like people DM me a lot, like I'm going through a breakup. What do you like? But I'm so comfortable in this position. And I'm like, it's not comfort. It's this false sense of comfort of feeling like, okay, I'm comfortable because this is what I know. Mm -hmm. And this is what I have grown to be okay with. But this, this isn't actually what you want. No. And you will find comfort a few months later when you're sitting on your couch alone and realizing like, oh my God, like I was happy to come home and to an like empty space. Peace and quiet. Yeah. yeah. Or I'm able to like look in the mirror and feel good about myself again. I'm able to feel attractive again because sometimes like someone else, pe- people think someone else is the reason you're going to feel attractive and that's never the answer. It, it feels like at the time, it sure as hell does. For yeah, sure. It's not, it's not. No. It's not. I, but I still want you to tell me that I'm pretty every day. You're gorgeous. Oh yeah. Thank like one so. of my kinks is positive affirmations. <laughs> You're, both, Holy. You're both hot as fuck. Thank you. No, I love a positive affirmation, but I, I'm a, I'm an acts of service girly. Oh yeah. Cheers. Yeah. What's your love language? Acts of service as well too. Yeah. Your acts, acts of service, service people. Yeah. yeah. My, I'm, I'm words of affirmation like, all like, the Get off way. your ass and do a thing for me that I didn't oh ask my God. for. Unload the dishwasher after a few tough days Makes on you horny. set. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. That is foreplay. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, that's, that's my, um, that's my, my, well, <laughs> words of affirmation being my love language is also my downfall because mm. you can, talk the talk to me and mm. maybe you, maybe you're not walking oh, the walk but I believed God. all the yeah, words so the now words. I'm so now I'm oh, in a really tough position now that. because yeah. if you're saying all, which is why like as someone who's non-communicative it's really tough for me to like get on yeah. the bandwagon yeah. early on but if someone knows how to say all the right things to me right. you can get me wrapped around your finger so quickly <sighs> And then it, we're in a tough position because then I'm realizing, oh my God, you're not following up with any of the Wait, things that oh you my said. God, but that can be manipulated so easily if someone I'm, knows that word of affirmation. Exactly. Oh. I'm unfortunate. See, you just need to do what Lauren does and make sure that everything that the, you know, uh, guy that's pursuing you does. I right. can't wait to hear what you're about to say. Puts into about three different group chats with all of your other friends to be able to dissect right. at all times. Because yeah, yeah. you might be able to fool one person. You can't fool 12 mm. That's true. girls. Mm. That's not true. Gonna and, and and usually I do, I, I, and I'll be very honest with my friends when I'm like, oh, this guy did this. 
but I'm, I am going to have to see it through a little longer. But he said I look really cute. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, I know this is a red flag and I should stop right here, but I am I going to have to keep going. I haven't learned my lesson going. yet, so just a yeah. little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's mm-hmm. tough because like or the, in the early dating stages, you so want everything to work oh out. Oh my God, yeah. The amount of red flags that people ignore is wild. That's why yeah. situationships can be harder to get over than long relationships oh because all you were thinking about was the potential with that person. Yes, 100%. I mean, even as the fuckboy guy, you, I, you have to, you know, have a moment of, I, I actually don't want to continue going on dates for no reason with people because you get lost in the sauce. Did you get lost right? in the sauce? Only lost in the sauce with you. I thought I pulled you out of the sauce. Mm. You were the sauce. You pulled me out of the what sauce. What kind of sauce was it? It was saucy. Okay. Yeah. I like a pink sauce. It was pink. I was pink sauce. Say. I've never tried that. <gasps> What? And I really wasn't what? in, like, I wasn't watching that trend when it was what? going on TikTok. No, yeah. I, just, yeah. I saw it at the end, the tail end of the okay. trend yeah. when people were just ordering these watery bottles of pink sauce that looked disgusting. Oh, no, 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 not that. That's like, that's like someone <laughs> making like a concoction and trying to sell it. Yeah, I You're saw that. You're talking about that. Italian pasta? Yeah, that weird, that weird, like, oh, it looked like okay, it was in so like, a, about like a knockoff ketchup bottle, right? The one that you're it talking about? It looks like drugged. Like, yeah. if you were to Pepto eat that- Bismol. Yeah, yeah, that pink sauce. Yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, so what are you talking about? I'm talking about? like a pink vodka pasta oh, sauce. Oh, it's like a John and Vinny. Yeah. Yeah. Yum, yum, it's yum. It's Alfredo yum. and marinara mixed yeah, together. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Sometimes pink sauce. Sometimes a little bit of Never spice thought in about it. it. That's yeah. so hot. Uh-huh. Never thought about it. Yeah, uh-huh. you're definitely pink Let's sauce. Let's go back to 1600 Vine for a quick second because yeah. I'll give you a little yeah. history lesson. So that <laughs> would have been named after 1600 Vine, which is in Hollywood. And that is the building where all of the musically and early YouTubers lived. Yeah. The Musers, that's where Logan Paul, that's where uh, Cody and some of these people you might not even know. Because Cody they, Co? No, no, no. Uh, Cody Johns, the Johns brothers. Okay. Was they Marcus were, Johns a Johns yes, brother? Okay. Yes, I, I yes, know yes, him yes. from Vine. Oh, sorry. Vine, Vine, Vine. Vine. I'm it's not kidding. So musically, yeah. there were some musically kids there, but it was the Vine kids. Vine. Oh, so like the, your Cameron Dallas, Sean yeah. Mendes yes. vibes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We know your search Hannah history. Hannah Stocking. This is just search history for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Lele. The, uh, King, King, um, King Batch. Batch. Yes. Um, I always want to say Bach. I know okay. it's King Batch. Um, Lele Pons. Lele. Oh my God. Rudy Mancuso. Can you imagine all just in one complex? That is wild. In Hollywood in 2013. David across the street. That's chaos. No, that was a few years later. Yeah. Were you ever on Vine? No, not really, but I was, I hung out with that group at 1600 Vine, my ex-boyfriend lived there, lived next door to Logan Paul. It was a whole thing. Like, and so that was when he started vlogging and okay. it was all these Vine kids like doing social media. Like Just I'm not walk kidding. Outside your the door. gym, the pool, the hallways, there was kids filming content at all times of the day. It was literally like a, a social media frat house. Wow. That's why Chaos. it was called. And everyone was probably hooking up. No, I would say that there were lots of other hoes coming okay. through. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because I because this is sounding a lot like the musical theater boarding school I went to, where everyone was in fact hooking up. Right. I be- because it's, it's boarding people, school. I it's just boarding assume. school. People yeah. are consistently practicing their craft in the hallways. I had my first threesome there in one of the dorms. I was like sixteen years old. <laughs> this is it's chaos. I'm like, Candy. It was pretty great. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't yeah, know the moment. So funny. Like, you know, I would have loved that as a kid. It, It'd be great. As a 16 year old, you're like, oh my God, this is like, you feel like you're an adult. Right. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's that sounds that sounds very chaotic. Yeah. At, like, I, oh my God. Were yeah. there fights breaking out? Like, um, I feel like I wasn't involved. So I lived at 1480 Vine. Okay. I lived one block over, but my ex boy, my boyfriend at the time, lived in 1600 Vine. So I was always okay. there. And I, so I got to be. Around and in the chaos, but didn't have to live within okay. the chaos. Adjacent. Adjacent yeah. to chaos the chaos. Chaos adjacent. Yeah. yeah. And you, so why, why were you never on Vine? Like on the app? Um, You know what it was? It's that like, I grew up doing long form content. So six seconds was just yeah, so like- Yeah, I was like, like, what the fuck what am I doing six right. seconds? I make I make 16 minute videos. That's true. I, like, I guess I, I see that. Seconds? Even with TikTok, I really struggled at the beginning to be like, well, what, how do I make this? Also like doing DIY based content. It's like, I've spent 10 years doing, right. you know, a few projects and it comes out to 12, 15 minutes. Right. But now people want like 10 projects Get in to 30 it. seconds. They right. want to like DIY reveal, DIY reveal. Right. And I'm like, oh my God. Like we're moving so fast, and so yeah, people like really readjust. It's tough. I did love Vine when it first came out. I mean, 
if you ever watch those Vine compilations, mm-hmm. like Vine holds up. Oh that, my God. It, Vine is funny. Content is funny. Because what you had, like, I, because I think having only six seconds was a challenge. Like yeah. you had to get, you had to have a full like Story joke and a set punch. up punchline yep, yep. all within six seconds. Mm-hmm. Some of the best comedy is on there. And I could have sworn if I really kept going with Vine, I had a few like viral Vines. <laughs> I want to say vi- by viral, yeah. I want to say like maybe it got like, a thousand likes or right, 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 at some right. point. Like I was like, but I, what I was, I was a freshman in high school. What at were you that doing? Point. I was making, I was trying to make funny videos. Okay. Okay. Like I was trying to, I was doing I would something. kill to see those now. I would love to somehow yeah. be able they're, to go back to my account. They're for sure there. You think? Well, yeah. no, because Vine, Vine, the app, the app got done. deleted. Right? I wouldn't go to Vine. I would go like Wayback Machine. Oh, Wayback Machine. I would machine, have to yeah. even, I can't even remember what my username was on there. Mm-hmm. Something of the it. iteration of Chris Olsen. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I was never able to get my username because that's like Chris Olsen until. I know 19 Chris Olsons. At least. How did you get Am at I the Chris best one? on uh, Without TikTok? Without question. Did you have to kick someone off? Um, so I just, so when you uh, like become verified on TikTok and there was a time at which it was pretty easy to get verified. When okay. I like initially blew up, um, someone just reached out from TikTok and was like, here's this form, sign it, you're good. Oh, so it was like yeah. really easy. Now, apparently it's very hard to get verified. So don't take like, don't take that word as that's the way to get verified. <laughs> so um, Just be famous and someone will ask. Yeah, yeah. someone will reach uh, out. Just, They'll easy. contact. Um, so I, when I got verified, someone reached out and she was like, and I'll be your point of contact mm. if you ever need anything. And my friend, the singer in the bathtub, Shri, changed her name a few months later to just at Shree. Mm -hmm. And that's like, you know, that's not the most common name in the world or especially on maybe on the platform. So she was like, you should try to get Chris. And I was like, I mean, there's no way I can just get Chris. Like, I'm sure someone has it. That's a flex. So I looked up Chris, at Chris, and I couldn't find anyone. And so I was like, okay. And so I emailed my point of contact and I was like, hey, um, I know this is probably like a really tough ask, Mm -hmm. but if the name at Chris happens to be available, um, or would there be any way that I could have that? And she's like, yeah, I'll check it out. Like, yeah, that might be tough, but I'll get back to you. The next day, my name was at Chris oh on TikTok. My. You know what? Sometimes platforms will take names, like popular names like that, and they'll hold them. Yeah. Right. So they don't get taken. Yeah, by like I'm like sure like it's, stuff. that's what I always think about that with like Kylie Jenner or Kim Kardashian. Yeah. I'm like, if a new platform is created, how did someone not already create that right. name? And the hold those And names. so I think it was either that or someone who had Chris had not posted. And right. I, right. I think if you don't post on an account for like a year or something, yeah. Mm-hmm. When whenever you sign up, it's then consider like you check a box of your terms and agreements that no one reads. But no one reads, right? That and it's like probably a ghost says like if you don't whatever. post yeah. after a year. But the name at Chris on Instagram is actively used. Ugh. It sure is now. It sure is. Chris Messina. I think he works at Instagram too. Oh so. yeah, so we can't. That's kick dirty. Him. Yeah, they should have to add like so, a yeah, fucking. But I did number. get Chris Olson. I think I, I used that's to be Olson good. Chris. Um, so now I'm Chris Olsen. Olsen Chris so, does not right, like bring off the tongue. No. It doesn't. Chris Olsen, star. Right. Olsen Chris. Mm. Who is that? Well, it's like they, they checked you into like your, yeah. your time. Uh, I do give my parents credit. Like Chris Olsen is a pretty good name. Yeah. I, I like I'll, I'll, I'll hold on to that. You, you're going to keep it? <laughs> For sure. Okay. I, I think I'll keep it. Like, you know, if I ever got married, which, you know. We talked about hoping. that. It's not- oh, Chris Messina, inventor of the hashtag. Good luck. What does that mean? Good luck. I'm done for. <gasps> yeah, you you ain't getting this. And that's okay. And Chris Messina, I love you. If you ever hear this, I hope you have it. <gasps> Single? No. Wait. This man? Yeah. No, that's not him. That's not him. Oh my God. That's I'm not talking him. about Chris no, 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 no. from the. I'm, that's Chris from. Okay, Chris We're Messina is the one from the Mindy. Pro- Wait, they have the same name? <laughs> I guess so. You're joking. Yeah, that's Chris that's Messina. That's Messina right there, the one I'm looking at. He looks the like inventor um, of the hashtag. Uh, Adam, uh, what's the guy from Rent? Help me out here. No way. The actor Chris Messina and that Chris have the same name. Mm. Well, actor Chris Messina is hot. That looks like- Inventor hashtag Chris is n- not as hot. Who's other like Adam, Rent, last name, that one, Adam. Oh, Pascal. Matt. Yeah, for sure. Looks like him. I see that. I see mm-hmm. that. Um, so, yeah. Um, I put for the hashtag on the front. <laughs> yeah, hashtag Just, inventor. Yeah, we go. yeah so hashtag inventor. It's okay. We right. will. We'll, we'll wait. Maybe one day. You know what? Fuck. Chris, okay. You know what? Uh, no, Chris Olsen is a good Instagram name, and I'll yeah. keep it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, who is who? Okay, who's your coffee delivery list that is 
already had coffee delivered and who is on your want to deliver coffee to list? Already have delivered. With a bit of context Let for me folks open that up. have not watched the story. Oh yeah, right, 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 This right, right, smells right. like my saliva. Like someone, yeah, I can yeah, smell because I literally deep throated it. Someone yeah. needs yes. to change that out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Let me, I, let me just open my uh, playlist of coffee videos to remember who, okay. I've delivered to Joshua Bassett. Okay. Ashley Tisdale. Love. Jojo Siwa. Love. Brittany Broski. Love. Call Me Chris. Mm -hmm. um, Austin Butler. That was a big one. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Elvis time. Elvis time. Literally at the Elvis <gasps> premiere. I like think back to that. And I'm like, I cannot believe I did that. Logistics like, that went into that. <laughs> I flew to Cannes, to, to the Cannes Film Festival right. to give Austin Butler coffee at the height of his career when Elvis is coming out. And like, it worked. Did Warner help you and like, it worked. logistically set that up? Yeah, so I was with Warner Brothers to promote the movie, oh, but okay, I amazing. was like, I am going to yeah. make this coffee thing happen. They were not, it, the, the coffee thing was not a part of- The, um, the whatever the, setup. Yeah. They didn't know yeah. it was part of the deal, but it was part of the but deal. But it was part yeah. of the deal. Yeah. It was part of the deal. And that, and it was, that was just like, I think back to that often and I'm like, I That's cannot- That's fucking cool. Yeah, like it, a, literally yeah. I had about 30 seconds to hand him that mm. coffee cup and make it happen. And this man puts his arm around me, smiles at me and is like, you brought this coffee from LA. <gasps> and I was like, am I allowed to call you daddy right now? <laughs> like what is happening in my re-virginized <laughs> bussy? Like and? there is, it is just, it's insanity. Yeah. And then he had to be whisked away by right, his publicist. Course. But I mean, to Hardly, but he took the coffee seconds. cup. He took the coffee he cup. He really took Also the stare that he makes at you, he looked like he was in love with stare. you. He looks like he's in uh, love with me. And I think it's a method that he has of like, just, I think he's learned that flirting with everyone just makes mm. him seem very attractive yeah. to the world. So what was your first line when you DM'd him again? Um, oh, so I, I haven't, I have actually haven't DM'd him. I thought you were, were going to go to the story. Well, because like, he's really? cuffed wow. up. He's right. with Kaya Gerber yeah. right mm -hmm. now and I can't compete with her. Um, Megan Trainer, obviously. Of course. My um, content sister, Abby Herbert. Mm -hmm. And then I've delivered it to my dad a lot. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and then it started off with delivering it to my boyfriend at the time. So it it evolved right. into celebrities. Mm. Wish list is I I. No, it was a dream. I do. No, no, give me the wish list. I'm yeah. gonna be honest. I do feel like a Harry Styles one is so in the too. future. I think so too. I and I'm a strong manifester. Yeah, I've been able to manifest a lot of things, mm -hmm. and this I just have a feeling that it will be able to happen. I at think some so point. too. I fully. I believe just in you I for think this. I believe yeah. in myself. Yeah. Yeah. for it, and I really I see it. Um, so I feel like he's kind of at the. The apex, am right. I even using that word correctly? He's at the top of the list of mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I just want to get that one done. And I feel like if I were to deliver coffee to Harry Styles, the world is my oyster. Who, like, I mean, who wouldn't want coffee from you if you've given coffee to Harry Styles? To Harry Styles. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm working on my own coffee brand right now. <gasps> and I'm hoping to release it like a holiday season vibes. Oh my God, yeah. This right. holiday season? Yeah, like Very we've been, fast. well, we've been working on okay. it. Okay, it's not like, okay. it's not like, so I just started, yeah. I'm gonna release wow. it tomorrow. Yeah. Notes of um, just Manifesting no. supply chain. <laughs> that's like what I'm hoping. So if it doesn't happen by then, we didn't even say this, but that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> And so if I were to able, if I were able to deliver him like my own coffee brand at that point oh too, yeah. that would be what so exciting. <gasps> and I'm just hoping to do that. I would also love to deliver to Lady Gaga because she's been my like gay icon mm -hmm. since I was a, a gay bee, as they call oh, it. A gay bee. A gay bee. I've never heard of that. <gasps> gay baby. That's I've adorable. I, I, put, I did. I did. Yeah. Figured it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would love I would love to deliver coffee to Emma Chamberlain at some point. Oh yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I've met her like once or twice. She would not know who I was, but I, I think that that's completely in incorrect. Well, she's not on TikTok and that is my platform of yeah, things. So but I, she's an, she's an internet kid though. Perhaps, perhaps. Yeah. And if she does, like mm -hmm. I would love to deliver it to I would love to deliver it to her and make that happen because, because everybody could just she's add another below, just add right. Emma Chamberlain. And she's a another like times? big coffee person. So totally, I feel like yeah. it would really make yeah. sense and um, so she's another one. And then like, you know, all of, all of the female pop stars that I just love. That's right. Beyonce. Ariana Grande. Beyonce, but oh that's one I have accepted will never happen. What? I just Let's, feel like Beyonce, be, am I, Beyonce is not doing a TikTok. I just think <laughs> that there'd be like a bodyguard who would at some point in time, just like, and remove you. Right. And It'd be I, to I, promote something. I'm actually, I, I would be, I would be terrified to deliver a coffee to Beyonce. Beyonce like, yeah, that, that that's would, terrifying. I mean, that would be just like, yeah. I am at, I, I, how do you act? Right. How do you act? What do you do? I, Beyonce coffee. Yeah, like there yeah. are no words no. to really present in that time. I think, I think 
I am not worthy of delivering Beyonce coffee. Well, it'll, if that's the case. You know what? We'll check a few off the list. We'll get Harry Styles. Yeah, yeah and we'll if we get Harry Styles, yeah. then, you know, maybe. But I'm, you know, there is no, there's not really much ego involved in this. Mm. I'm not like, I, well, I know I'll be delivering coffee to all of these right. bitches by the end of this year. <laughs> I'm very much like, yeah, I'm manifesting and hoping that it's going to happen. But if I never get to deliver coffee to another famous person again, the fact that I was able to even do some of these oh in the first God, place yeah. is so exciting. If you retired the coffee delivering thing tomorrow, it's I think, success. yeah. It's still so, yeah. Like I, I think, I think, I, I think about that often where I'm like, I've gotten to a point where so many of these really fun, amazing dreams have like mm. come true yeah. that I'm like, if, if I were to plateau and never do an exciting thing again, mm. like I'm so grateful for all of the things that have already happened because how exciting it is to be able to say that I've done this like relatively right out of school oh my when God, I yeah. thought I was going to give up on musical theater and work and be a, per, a fitness instructor. <laughs> I, I t- finished my training. I like. Di- oh I went God. through the certification. I mean, you're absolutely jacked. So I mean, like. Thank you. <laughs> get it. I do occasionally I throw thirst a thirst trap up yeah. on TikTok mm. or Instagram. Oh my God! No, you're like shockingly ripped. Thank you. I encourage I all think, of. I I think people. Yeah, I think I do. I uh, I don't I don't front with that. Because I think that's and, like- Until you do and when you right, should. Yeah. Right, It's like, it's like, that's not the most, obviously like a, a body is not the most interesting part of anyone. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, where I'm so much like attracted to a mind or a brain or something like that. But like, I, I, I am just really into fitness. Mm-hmm. I love it. I kind of got really into it when I got sober when I was 19. And so I was like, I need to channel all of this wild energy into something else. <laughs> and so I started like really aggressively running on the treadmill. Oh my God. Ooh. I, got I saw my, your mile was under six minutes yes, today. Yes, like my mile is now pretty consistently that under six minutes insane. because I'm literally like an insane person. I'm just like, oh, I need to, like I'm running from my issues, but also just like <laughs> trying to get all of my energy out yeah, at once. Yeah, yeah, and no, I love so it for you. fitness has been, it become like a really big staple in my life. Mm. And yeah, occasionally I like to show what I've done. As you should. Yeah. Okay, I have a small surprise for you, but I need you to close your eyes and we're going back to the topic of coffee. Oh close, my God. Close your eyes. Oh my God. Also, I'm sweating now. Not gonna be graceful of Immediately me. Immediately sweating. I'm, I'm watching you to see if you're cheating. Whatsoever. You're great. <gasps> is this better? Is it, yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's I'm good. not looking. Oh. I literally can't see a word. Right, a right. word? You okay. What I'm talking about there. Oh, my books okay. are falling out. Well, Do I need to like hold a hand out? No, no, no. Okay. Oh, wow. And smooth. Wait. I'm going to open up my eyes and you're both going to be sunning your asshole. (gasps) You want to see? That's what's happening. Hey. And And Patreon. In the spirit, we keep your eyes closed. In the spirit of (coughs) delivering something to you that's not a coffee, but maybe something even a little bit better. And the celebration in less than 48 hours of your sobriety date. Oh my God. We (gasps) wanted to deliver you a little cake. It's not a coffee. You can open your eyes. Oh my God. (laughs) Oh my God. Oh my, wait, I didn't even remember that it was two days from now. Happy birthday! <laughs> How did you, you really did do happy your research. Happy sobriety birthday. Yeah, happy sobriety birthday. Oh my God. One of my best friends Thank is sober you. and the birthday is a big deal. This also looks like a really good cake. Have you never had Suzy cakes before? No. Not I only are we learning about dinner. 1600 Vine, but we're learning about Suzy cakes This today. is about to be my dinner. Oh my God, I'm really sweating. That's, thank it's you. Not a coffee, but it's- No, a- this is perfect. Oh my God, I can't, I actually cannot wait to eat this. <laughs> like for, fully for my dinner. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, I can confirm it's delicious. This is one of the best cakes in LA. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, in two days, it'll be five years. I thought it was five, but I didn't want to put the wrong number yeah. candle on it. And yeah. then you have fucking- five. It's really crazy. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's five years because it feels like it could have been last year, but mm. it's, it's- um. It, it, it is wild. I attribute everything that's ever happened in my life since then to um, the going to rehab back in the day. How, like, yeah, how'd you do it? Like crazy. So my, I was, I, my, it runs in my family mm-hmm. on both sides. So I think my, and my mom went to rehab when I was, um, I think when I was going from eighth grade to high school, she was in and out of rehab for about a year. Okay. So we kind of knew that it was a part of the family. Yep. And right when she got sober is when I started drinking because oh. I was like, I went to boarding school. I, we, there were house parties at people's houses yeah. and I would like, you know, you, every, everyone was doing it. As, Unsupervised, on boarding school. also boarding right. school. And it was like, yeah. and it, it wasn't really an issue. I want to say for the first like three years, because it was just like, yeah, like you're in high school, you're going crazy. Like right. I do not recommend that anyone ever does that ever. <laughs> but um, it does sometimes it did. That was my story of like, you know, 15 to 17, it would happen like, 
every few months, a friend would have a house party. We would all get drunk. It was fun. I would definitely get pretty drunk. And but it was like whatever. Right. Bad experience. And then it you were was in boarding like, school, right? Yeah. So like yeah. People knew where you had to kind of be the next right. day. Always. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So then it was like, but then it was senior year of high school going into college that it like, you know, really started going crazy. Um, especially once I got to college yeah. was you're just then, you know, in boarding school, you have dorm parents, you have to mm. be, you have a curfew, you have to be back at a certain time. You have to, there are a lot of rules. College, you're unsupervised. Free for all. It's like, do whatever you want. Yeah. And so I started really going crazy on the weekends and all of that stuff. And then it just, you know, it's it's a long story, but it very much declined summer after freshman year because I had all of the time in the world and I started doing other things other than just drinking. Mm -hmm. And my roommate, who was my best friend freshman year, um, told me like right before we moved in together, she's like, I'm kind of like nervous about living with you because, wow. oh, um, you know, it's gotten a little crazy yeah. and I'm just worried about you and just want to let you know that like, you know. But, it, but the first time someone close to you was like, you make me uncomfortable. And I want to say yes as a friend. Yeah. You know, like family had definitely voiced their concerns. Right. It had definitely become an issue there. And th the eyes were on me, but a friend being like, I'm a little nervous about this. Yeah. I was like, you know, an addict mind. I was like, well, don't be, it'll be fine. Right. I like, I'll just be, and then your, your addict brain is like, okay, I just need to hide it better. That's right. all mm -hmm. I need to do. Um, and then it, th there were, I was just like, there was a point at which I could not go to sleep sober. So I either had wow. to get drunk, do a different drug or like smoke, smoke something or like, which I'm not smoke something as in like something really crazy. <laughs> smoke weed, but I don't know if I want to say that. Like crack. demonetize, just like, no, 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 no. You're no. fine. Um, you deep so, the microphone. Right. Yeah, I yeah. did. If that didn't so, do it, um, it's okay. <laughs> Because that would keep me awake. That would not help me go to bed. But say. I was smoking weed and I didn't even, it, that wouldn't even make me feel good. I'm not a good yeah. stoner. Like mm -hmm. it just makes me more anxious, which is, I know a lot of people are like, it chills me out. No, Never no, did I'm that for me. Well too, for and so yeah. I think, and so that was like a telltale sign to me that I'm like, oh, I'm doing stuff I don't even enjoy doing right. because I just am so uncomfortable being in my own brain Ooh. sober. At 19 though, that's like a young age to have to, Think about that. It was really young. I was, I was, my, my liver started failing. Wow. Like oh I was God. going through, I was, I, there, wow. there was a point at which um, uh, we would be going out. I would be going to a, a friend's place for a party or something like that. And I would finish like a fifth of vodka for the pregame. Oh. And then I would go to the friend's place and be like, Hey, like I haven't drank yet. Like let's, so I, so I could be at the level I wanted to be without people getting worried. Right. But then I was always blacking the fuck out and crying yeah. and yeah. like being an absolute mess. So obviously people figured it out, but like I was, I mean, I was, I, I remember the first time I finished one of those and felt that I was just kind of buzzed. <gasps> I was like, hmm. This is getting to a point where it's not fun, oh, but I have shit. no other option. And yeah. I I ended up admitting to my friends, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely like an alcoholic right. and I'm going to have to figure this out after college, but I can't figure it out now. Like right. there's no, we're 19. Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do? So I woke up one Wednesday in September, September 28th. Um, and I, and my roommate was like, your dad's here. And I was really hungover. So I was like, what? <laughs> Got out of bed. And then my entire family on my dad's side, my sister, um, my two really close friends from school were there and they were like, Hey, it's, you can't keep doing this. And I was just like, I don't, what are you talking about? Like, I, I can't leave school right now. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you? And I was like, you know, they were so doing the intervention. Of the year, yeah. yeah and, then, and I was like, okay, I'm getting all of this, um, information right now. And this, uh, okay. They're telling me I have to stop drinking. So fine, I'll figure it out. But I thought it was just going to be like they're talking to me and that's going to be it. Right. And so they all read their letters and then some, the interventionist is like, so we have like a plane ticket for you to go down to Florida today Whoa. to go to detox and then go to rehab. It's a 90 day program. And I was like, oh, I can't do that. Like I have, I have, to, I have yeah. to stay in school. I have class tomorrow. I can't do that. And I, and then he literally goes like, okay, Everyone turned to the next page in your, they They're all like, had packets of paper. Avoid, it was like, okay, yeah, yeah oh we figured God. this was going to happen. Turn to the next page. And then every family member reads how mm. you are no longer going to be a part of their life yeah. anymore. And um, you, I like my aunt started reading hers. Oh my, my mom God. read hers. My mom had one from my grandma um, who I've shared her occasionally on social media, Lola. Um, yeah, yeah, I saw her react to the blonde hair. Yeah, so she 
had a letter that she had to write oh. about like not being connected to me anymore. And then my sister ended up like breaking down right before my dad read his letter because she was like, please don't make dad read his. Yeah. And I knew that that meant that um, my dad was essentially going to be like, you can't come home. Right. right. I'm not paying for school. Right. I'm not paying You're for done. this. You're mm -hmm. going to be out on the street. And after he read that, or after she said that and she said, like, dad, don't read yours. And then my dad started sobbing. And then I was just like, it was- I'll go. It was it was horrible. And yeah. my dad is one of the people who I've seen him cry three times right. in my life. Yeah. Um, How did he do it, Men in Black 3? I yeah. gotta ask him. Yeah, I gotta figure that out. I, I should start playing that one. Yeah. But I, that was just, you know, it's, I- it, it was one of the, I, I think back, you know, to my family, like that must've been so hard for them too. And then I think to my two friends who were my closest in college, I'm like, I cannot imagine how hard that was. Cause they, they say to me all the time, they're like, that must've been a really hard day for you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, sure. How was that for you? Because like, right. I can't imagine what it's like for a friend to have to send your friend away. My roommate was like, when you walked out the door, I like waved goodbye to you and assumed like we were never going to speak again because you would never want to talk to me right. after that. Did they know that it was going to be happening that day? Yeah, yeah, they Cause did. Because they, they would have had to contact your family and be like, it's this bad, right? Right. Because right. who else no, would have they, been able to give them yeah, that they, insight? They contacted, my family already knew that it was that bad. They all ended up like, my everyone flew into town and they ended up meeting the morning before mm. and being like, okay, this is what we're going to do because you have to hire an inter interventionist and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, By the way, you don't have to. They just did it. Like, right. that's, that's the crazy thing. Right, like, right. They did it the right way. Yeah, they did. And it was. it's just like, it's uh, It's definitely something I like. don't wish on anyone, but it's also, that was the most, the single most pivotal day right. in my entire life. Yeah. And I frequently, anytime a really good thing happens or or anything happens in my life, I will call my, my ex-roommate, who was the one who kind of facilitated it all, mm -hmm. frequently like crying and thanking her for that day because I'm like, you did something that I can't imagine like someone doing for their friend. Like yeah. how, how like strong you have to be to be able to do that for someone else and know that it might risk your entire totally. friendship for yeah. that person, yeah. but love them so much that you're like, I know you can be better. Mm -hmm if this costs our friendship, I just want you to be happy and I hope you can be better. So I literally that day, I went to a detox for a week and then went into the program and very quickly realized 90 days is just what they tell you to get you there. And mm. I was there for about 10 months. I was, yeah. was going to say, so yeah, okay. You obviously said you would do it. Then how did you actually like? It's, yeah, I mean, they uh, my, my rehab was not one of those ones that was like, we are going to love you until you love yourself. <laughs> It was like, so you have fucked up everything in your life and how are you going to make it out? And I, I this, I trip, I think so much about like online culture with this kind mm -hmm. of stuff because it is, that is what thickened the fuck out of my skin. Wow. Because I can't even I'm like, I see some of these, I, I see some of these online takes that happen mm -hmm. and I'm like, we, like it, it, in group therapy, you would have to go, they would find your weakness, first of all. And then you would have to literally like, one of one of my things was being a people pleaser. So they were like, go around the room and tell each person what you don't like <gasps> about them. Oh, torture. I literally started breaking down. I was like crying and shaking because I was like, I can't do it. But I they would not end group until I did. Right, right. Or or there would be times that the therapist would just sit down at the start of group. And there were so many rules there. Um, and so obviously, because it's a rehab, and be like, so someone broke one of the rules and we're going to sit here until one of you admits to it. And she would already know who it was or sometimes the fucking trick was she wouldn't or there wouldn't be anyone and people would just start admitting, admitting. to things. <gasps> it feels, like, it feels like, like what they did, like two hot to handle. Oh, and it's like one of, one of you crazy. fucked. Mm -hmm. who did it? Well, and then who they figure it? it out. But you literally, it's the, one of the first directives you have to do is, sure. to, is tell your 10 most shameful secrets <gasps> to the group within your first two weeks of being there. And if you aren't, if, if you don't get vulnerable enough and they can always tell, you have to do it again until you are essentially traumatized on the floor. Sure. Oh, um, so God. that was the kind of things I would I was going through consistently. We would hold, there would be funerals for people who were still alive, but they would have their parents fly down for parents weekend and then tell the child their eulogy because if they were not doing well in treatment, they were essentially dead to them. Like it was- Oh my God. It was insane. Like you would walk past, you would walk down the hallway and if you saw three of the doors on the left closed, you knew they were having a funeral that day. You were like, oh, 
I guess group is a funeral. And then we would all shuffle into the room where there was an empty casket. And one of the parents would get up and like their child would be right in front of them. Right. And they would say their eulogy over how this child is like, has died essentially because oh, they're- oh my. Do you think that this was like, obviously all or some of this was effective for you, but do you think that's like too here's, intense? Here's or? the thing. Yeah. It, it, there, there is no perfect way to run a rehab. I'm right. sure. Um, I would say it was helpful for me for getting sober, but now there's a lot of work I have to do undoing a lot of the things I learned there yeah, right. because I now think of myself as wrong in every situation. Yeah. I'm obvious. I'm very hard on myself because mm -hmm. I'm all, because my thing there was, I was the rule follower. I was seeing people break rules and get in trouble. So I was like, I am going to follow every single yeah. rule possible. Right. And they were literally like, well, part of the process is you're supposed to fuck up and break rules so we can like, right. But you're like, but I'm a people pleaser. I have like, to follow the no, rules. No, no, but I'm yeah. not going, like they would pull shit on me. They made me move off the residence um, area. They made me move into a halfway house prematurely because, and and not tell me why, because they were just trying to shake up what was going right. on. They were like, and, oh. and then they made me take like three buses in the morning to get to clinicals every morning. Just to see if you'd fuck up? Yeah. And I didn't have a phone or anything. So I was just like, twiddling your thumbs. I was thumbs. figuring yeah. it out of, of just to like, give Whoa. me more freedom because they were like, okay, under this environment, I guess you're not going to fuck up. So we have to right. like, because a lot of people say relapsing is part of the journey. The process. That's part of the process. So people would like uh, frequently threaten to leave treatment or leave treatment and relapse. And then they would come back and that would kind of be the push right. to restart mm -hmm. your journey. Mm -hmm. But if you threatened to leave and then you didn't, you were forced to pack your suitcases and carry around your pack suitcases with you for two weeks until you like stayed Whoa. for longer than that because it was like, okay, you're going to threaten to leave then carry your baggage with <gasps> you. This is crazy. It was, it was truly like I, uh, when I tell the full story to people, it takes like four hours. I can't yeah. the things this that, is a documentary. No, right I mean, fully, yeah. I, I will write a book one day yeah, about actually, all of the things that have yeah. happened because it was wait, wait, it's be a great musical. I just want to throw that out. A great musical. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. For yeah. sure. There there Pasek and Paul would love this thing. Exactly. <laughs> Very, your next year of enhancing. Obviously. But there were there were a lot of things that were like these sneak attacks. Mm -hmm. Like um family weekend would happen and it would be the patient's job to cook meals for the family. <gasps> and they would just be like, Great, you have to cook meals for your family. So and then you would bring them to the family group in the family circle that you were in. Right. And then the therapist would be like, Okay. What did everyone get for lunch? And if your meal was too basic, you got destroyed. And one time, and the first time I made my family some pasta because that's all I really knew how to cook, destroyed. It was like, oh, what? You boiled noodles for like six minutes for your family who is paying out of their ass for you to be here, who flew down for oh the weekend. Is that all they're worth? They're worth a box of pasta and I'm $2. One, and I, I love was, pasta and be honored to eat I pasta. I love it. I love it. It was so good. Oh but I was God. literally like, yeah, it was. It, That's traumatizing. Trauma. So this trauma. worked. But it, it worked. It worked to an extent. I actually still work with the therapist that I was mainly placed with there. Wow, and her and I work on now undoing a lot mm. of that stuff because- So I, she's aware that like it was probably too far. She, in some she has since left the yeah. uh, treatment center That's because she said it was really tough to be there as a therapist because sure to see. you had to- you, you were being told that it was the treatment philosophy there. Yeah. You were being told to like- be really harsh on these people. And a good amount of them did need it, but some people didn't. And she frequently says to me, she's like, you know, I think some of it was useful to you, but I think some of it was probably just traumatizing you far in the other direction right. Right. to a point that it was no longer helpful. Scared to do anything. Scared to do anything. Scared yeah. to make it. Like when I first built a platform, I was just terrified. I was so terrified of doing anything wrong. Yeah. Mm. I was literally like, I, I, I'm I, always having this microscope on my feelings anyway. How mm. am I supposed to do anything ever? And so the, it, it just like, and then being there for 10 months too, like you start becoming really used to a way of thinking about yourself mm. and thinking like you're always in the wrong. You're always, because you know, it, it is important to, to be accountable for your mistakes and to be like, wow, I really did destroy some relationships with my family. I made my roommate uncomfortable for like the whole time we were living together. I was really not a good friend for a lot of the time. But they like overcorrected. But how you do you work wrong? out of that feeling yeah. after you've just been told that every day that you're there, you're like, well, 
like you you think you deserve to like you know it's a whole game to get phone privileges not your own phone but to get the landline privileges right, to call right. your phone so you say okay i feel like i've done a good amount of work and therapy i've been here for about a month can i call my family and they're like do you think like one month of therapy is enough to undo the years of trauma that you've put on your family and you're like no i guess i haven't and then you, so imagine having that kind of mindset. Go, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, right. I get that call. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Or, or, or they're like, okay, how many letters have you written to your family? But they don't tell you to write letters to your family before then. Right. And they're like, just moving the goalposts. It, it is always, it was always a game. So that's, like, yeah, that's a whole game of it's manipulation. Just, it's, you, you kind of, it's, it's like manipulating you in the way of then really being vigilant of being good to your family, which is good. But I'm, I'm, it's almost like you're, you start to be a good person at of fear, right. yeah. which is like, yeah. I, I think it set me up to want to like be a good person out of fear. And one joy I found of social media is I want to be a good person out of the joy I'm able to share mm -hmm. with people mm -hmm. instead of being scared that um, I just need you to like me because I'm scared that I'm going to do something bad. Right. right. Because I don't, it's been five years since I've done something like bad relationship ruining. Right. Um, so I think there's, there's so many different parts to it, but um, I, I, I do think there's some some things that really helped. And a lot of my, I will say it's probably one of the most effective ways to get people sober because an addict is manipulative at their core. So if you're just nice to them and you're like, you just need to love, then they're just going to be like, okay, I love myself again, but all you're thinking about is doing drugs. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're consistently like told, you told these things, having to face the trauma that you've put on people and always having consequences for the actions that you do, like it down to um, being, I, I remember there was one girl who her mom was visiting and she, and also tell me when to stop. Oh, no, no. Um, <laughs> she, but it is kind of fascinating. Her mom was visiting and she took her mom's phone to text a friend and was like, I'm leaving treatment. Like I have to get out of here in a week. Um, and she assumed her mom was like in on it too. And her mom ended up telling our therapist and we <gasps> walked into group that day oh, no. and her texts were printed out and, and taped all across the room. And our therapist sat down and was just like, so do you want to share what these are? And that was literally how it started group. And, and, and of course she just breaks down yeah. and we all walk in the room and I'm like, Oh, what are those? And I like look to her and I'm like, ah, oh. Oh my god! Uh, That's what this is going to be. There were pl there were so there were so many and um, think about this. That kind of level of drama was happening every, every weeknight right. yeah. Yeah. for almost ten I'm months sure of like my that life. Didn't even phase you. It, it got to a point where I was like, "So what's happening today? Like, yeah, what right. are we, what's the gag today? Yeah, <laughs> like what? Okay, so what's going? Like there was there there was always someone walking out of group crying mm -hmm. right there was all like you know it was just it's th that is so much therapy to do yeah um and it's so much confrontational aggressive therapy to do and when you come out of living one way and you're very set in that way and then you're really like whiplashed into another way yeah it's really hard then to now undo those beliefs right. and after find, a while. like the healthy middle of like the mentality. Yes. Because yeah. I yeah. can't imagine you, they expect you to take that mindset with you for the rest no. of your life. And while it is very successful, sure. you have, um, you have the, the success percentage is still really low yeah. for all addicts because it's something you're born with. It's, it's one of the hardest diseases to get over because it's like something that's, People, you want to say it's it's your choice, but it's also just a way that has also unfortunately become pretty normalized in society mm -hmm. too. There are people who can be very functional addicts, but totally. they're still really destroying themselves. And so while it's very successful and there are a few of my friends who are doing really well, I know a lot of people who have died since yeah. then because they're, they're either, they went so far in the direction of feeling like they're a horrible person again that mm -hmm. th how do you not feel that anymore? You do drugs again. Mm -hmm. yeah, or Or they we're never trying to listen the whole time. So right. they just immediately went out and relapsed too. And it's just, it's so, it's like a heartbreaking thing to be a part of, which is why I think I try to talk about it a lot because I'm like, there is this other side of five years ago, I was in this position of like consistently being traumatized, having to tell my life story, yeah. telling people why I hated them because I was being forced to in group to now like, 
hopefully delivering coffee to Harry Styles <laughs> one day. Like, yeah, like what a pivot. And that's what I, I just really, I, if because if I could go back and tell myself the things that were going to happen mm-hmm. on my intervention day or anything, like, you know, my family and friends were doing the intervention just to hope I could live a normal life again. Right. right. The goal was never so you can like, make it all come true. They were just hoping that I could go through a day without almost dying. And don't mm-hmm. die. And yeah. I, I, and, but to be at this point, I think is just what I want to be able to always communicate to people because I think addiction has gotten so normalized in young people's lives mm-hmm. in the LGBTQ community. Like it's just, it's, it's such a tough thing to grapple with because it's also like, people have put it into their comedy. Like it's funny to get too drunk a lot of the time. It's funny to have the Sunday scaries. It's funny to be like cracked open a beer at 12. And yeah, it can be funny. There there are so many funny sketches to make out of it. But I think when I see those jokes now, I'm like, I know the pain that is behind those things because it really, what we make jokes out of it because it is so painful. Right. Mm -hmm. But so how do you put all that into an equation that is you on the daily basis? I, I think it's like- Running a five minute mile. Running, right. it'll help. Yeah, yeah like it's, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of things I think there's a lot of things I've gotten methodical about. Mm. Um, like when I go out to dinner with my friends, it is known that on a Saturday night when we go out to dinner, Chris heads home after dinner because I'm like. Yeah. I'm ready to go home and watch a movie. Right. You guys have the most fun. Mm. And that was actually, honestly, it was a really healing part about the first time I went to Fire Island because I was like, I'm really scared. I'm not a partier. Their drugs are pretty big there. I mean, it's like, for anyone who doesn't know, it's like a big gay destination. And I was just like, I'm really nervous. And one of my friends was bringing me and he was like, and he knew, he was like, you know, if you're ever feeling uncomfortable, you can do whatever. And so I, the first night everyone went out, I decided to stay home and just like, watch Stranger Things and was like, I'll hang out with you guys in the morning. And then as I got really close to all of them, the last night I was like, you know what? I'll go out with you guys. And because I had a really like comfortable group around me, I felt good about like the house hopping that we were doing and like just being social with people. And mm-hmm. no one was really getting to the level where they were sloppy. Like I was messy, like, yeah. I was able to find a good relationship with going out that night. Yeah. And I feel like it's really changed my mindset because I do want to find the middle ground and not be like, I'm a 24 year old who never goes out. Right. Mm-hmm. I always go home. And despite living in, in LA and New York. Like exactly the, the, the places where it's okay to always go out until you're, you don't want to go out. Anymore. Always go out. Yeah. Like there will always be something happening any day of the week. And so I, I'm trying to also find a new balance of being like, I can be a person who goes out and has fun sober, but you really just need a good like community support around you. Totally. I think it just, I think I've, I, I'm a very much a um, routine person. Sure. Mm-hmm. I eat the same things almost every day. <laughs> My schedule is very similar almost every day, unless I'm traveling, in which case it's exciting because I'm traveling. So I'm not really like nervous. Um, but I, I haven't had like a craving for alcohol um, since I was in rehab. Wow. I kind of forget what it feels like wow. to be drunk, which I think is a good thing yeah. because I'm like, I, I think I, I remember that it just, it numbs you out and makes you not have to feel a lot of the pain that's going on. Right. Just forget but, logic and just- but I think when it, you've got like so much great stuff going on and right. you're happy, aside from like the guy who won't text you the Wordle score, right. like you're not trying to numb I, I mean, I know out. it would all fall apart the second I start doing something like that again, because I was a pretty non-functional addict, ah. um, especially by the end. But I think I think it also helps me in those situations of a person not texting back or yeah. you know me not getting my way with the guys. When I would get drunk, a monster, oh, a, a drunk monster. Texter? Like I would immediately just be like, "And so you're not going to text me?" Blah 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 blah. And so I finally have so a wait, little bit of self. You would tell people why you hated them after you had the drink. While I was drunk, right, so exactly. We think so that we're not that. chill now. Not chill. Oh my god, not I was. I was there sight. was not even a little bit, and yeah. I wasn't pretending yeah. to be. All of those walls <laughs> were falling away, and it was disgusting. It was uh, like horrifying. <sighs> but I think I think it's helped me because I'm like, I, I don't need to send those texts to the person who's not texting me yeah. back. No. I don't mm-hmm. need to communicate to the person who's not giving me what I want. But when I was drunk, I felt like I needed to, sure. and so now I'm like, you know what? I'm able to kind of drop it and be like, I'm gonna watch my film tonight. <laughs> Wait, uh, did I make you talk about this more? The, the curious no, thing in your head, that in my head, like through this entire thing is how or what is the best way that you want people to, when you're on your first date and they find out you're sober, right? And they go, oh, oh no more drinks for me, yeah. right? What, what is the best way for someone to be able to not treat you differently, but also be aware of your- right. 
Because it is always a thing because, you know, whenever the drink menu comes out or they ask for right. drink, oh, waiters always ask about drinks first. And you're going to say, no, I'm good or I'm sober, right? I actually, and I usually, unless it's asked about, I don't really get into it. I'm like, oh, I'm just good with water. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then usually that actually does prompt the question of like, right. oh, you're not drinking. And I'm like, oh, I never drink. Um, I think it's, I think I don't really have a preference. As long as you're not getting sloppy, right. I'm okay with someone else having drinks. That doesn't, tri- I mean, maybe a year in that would have been like, no, maybe no, but avoid like, I wouldn't it. know how to do, I, the, I, that would make me, I don't get weird in a lot of social circumstances. That one I would have to like try and come up with a solution. And I don't know no, what the right answer I'm, is. I'm, I think the solution is, I, I'm, it's very personalized probably to the person. Right. But for me, I'm like, do whatever you want. I, I don't want to affect, I don't want, my yeah. situation to affect how you go about your life. Right. And that's actually why I like won't always go out with friends after we go to dinner because I'm like, please go right. have your fun. I don't want you guys to feel like you can't because I'm around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, even if like even at my wedding, I'll probably have like a bar for people to still have because I want I want people to still have fun. Like I know that's an integral part of a lot of things. And so I think it's like I I I just know it's my situation to handle. Mm-hmm. So in my head, I'm like please don't act any different ever. Yeah. Right. And I mean, I think getting sloppy for anyone on a first date, people, no one's really going to love their date getting sloppy. <laughs> yeah. the, the, not, not somebody that I would want to be with. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I loved how you just fucking almost shit yourself by the end of the yeah. night. That yeah. was great. Yeah. Super yeah. hot. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think I, there, I don't really surround myself with people who do get to that level anyway right. anymore. Mm-hmm. So I think I've, I haven't really run into that issue too often, but it is really interesting. Like, you know, the few interactions I've had just kind of being out in New York, having a late dinner yeah. or out here and like, um, uh, you know, a, a drunk follower or someone comes mm-hmm. up ah. and that can be a really tough situation to deal with where I can get pretty uncomfortable because I, you're giving me love right now, but it's through this mask of a lot of substance. Yeah. Yeah. And that personally obviously affects me in a way because I have a, a very interesting relationship with that. But I want to be there for you, but I'm also like, I, I got to have a little bit of a boundary with you because yeah. it yeah. gets a little like triggering after a while. Right. Um, so those are kind of the only situations where I've gotten like kind of actively uncomfortable about a substance, I yeah. would say. Yeah, that's tricky though, because I think people don't want to make it weird, but also want to be able to be yeah. happy too. And you don't want them to not... Have no. fun too. Mm-hmm. So it's and like everyone's different. Right. And I think I'm really lucky to have gotten sober at 19. Right. Yeah. Before I was really able to get these deep seated habits. Like my mom got sober when she was, I want to say, like in her 50s. Wow. And so she has she has had a lot of habits that have been really tough to work her way out right. of. And I think it was probably much harder for her to be in environments where people were drinking because yeah. for the 30 years of her life, it had been normal for her to also drink in those environments as yeah. well. I wasn't. I was never legal drinking around right. here, so it was always like, "Oh my god, that's right." Yeah, right. I didn't even think about that. No, so I was yeah. always, "Oh my god," in a basement or right. like, yeah. asking some. So I was always doing it in an unhinged way. I was right. never at a rest. I've never been ordered at a restaurant legally. and like casually yeah. ordered a drink. So that's never been something that's hard not to do because I've never right. actually experienced doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what does liquor taste like when it's not out of the large quantity bottle? Right. 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 Exactly. Um, so there were there were definitely just like I, I I've had a different experience with it, but I think my like what I communicate to most people is like don't change your like I, I'm not going to be weird about it. You don't need to be weird about it. Right. Like mm-hmm. we're we're chill. We're all good here. Yeah. And a lot of people, honestly, when I go on dates, like really like that I don't drink because they're like, oh my god, I. T- I, I didn't really want to drink tonight or like I was, I've gone out for the past three or like I, I'm not much of a drinker either. So this is great because then when I don't, when I order a water, they're like, yeah, I guess I'll also take water. And then it makes us very happy people. Listen, get and a guy, you feel great the next day. I'm going to get a guy that can like yeah. deep throat a yeah. microphone and stay sober. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Both at the same time. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I think one of the, the best, best things is that I haven't had a hangover in five years. Like, oh my that's God. kind of like, that's oh. this underrated, like amazing thing yeah. that I, I, I don't really think about it because I'm always waking up normally, but I'm like, oh my God, like every weekend, some of my friends are like, yeah, I, I'm like, yeah. Oh, I can't go out, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, right. 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 You that's did that like last a night. thing yeah. people yeah. go through yeah. is like you get... <laughs> drunk and then you feel really sick the next morning. Yeah, um, and you it again until forever. And then you do it again and you mm. have to like eat horrible food to try to make the sick go away mm. and it's like it all feeds in. Mm. And I, I'll just like eat the horrible food just because I want to, just for right, fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? So We do that often. We do that often. Yeah. yeah. We do that often. Um, 
Devin, what are we at? We're probably. I mean, we're yeah, we have, no, I feel like I've talked so much. We, this Basically. was. No, it's not our, our longest pod. Nope. No, it's not our longest pod. I guess I'll have Matt King. Matt should, King. Well, should, do you think we should pivot to something that's happier? like happier yeah, before we <laughs> end it? Because I'm, okay. like, I'm like, should we end? <laughs> but, but by the way, everyone needs to hear that. So good. And this also, and, and actually it is a happy story. Like it isn't, I'm so grateful that it wasn't a sad ending yeah. because oh for God, so many yeah. people it was a sad ending. And I just, you know, if there, there always is that motivational point at the end of it of like, it's you're never too young to get the help. Mm -hmm. it, it, and so many people at rehab were in their thirties and were like, if I had only gotten it at yeah. your age, because I think, and I was thinking about this the other day, like addiction reframed is a superpower. Like it has given me the Ooh. drive I love that. to do yeah. so much in my life. Like I, you know, the, t to have a healthy addiction to thing, like a healthy addiction to my drive to work right. has helped me get, get so far. I am so like into getting to the next step or figuring mm -hmm. out a new way to entertain people. But when it, so when you like readjust where you're driving all your energy towards, you can do so much with that. And that's why I think there are so many people who are successful who had had a really tough story, but have gotten yeah. sober because mm -hmm. we have so much of this energy of making sure we get what we want at any cost. Mm -hmm. right. So just making sure that shifts to something positive mm -hmm. and that can like, you know, benefit the world in a positive way rather, th rather than making sure we get what we want to destroy ourselves. It can be one of the best things for someone to do. And so I think for anyone who is going through that that thing, like if you are literally able to restructure or reframe the exact thing you're going through, don't try to turn it off. Right. Like it can be, it can open your life up to so much more. And I think that's just been a huge realization that I've had recently because I, I won't, I don't say like, oh, I turned off that part of my life. I think I just readjusted yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like, that was the whole thing. It's gonna be a hell of a book and musical. And a musical, and then and a, a movie, a, movie, a yeah. feature then film. A movie. Yeah. If right. Baz Luhrmann will be calling. A like multi-season series. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Then, okay, right. I got something happier then. Hit it. Do it. Want to top it? <laughs> what? I oh. mean, that was... No, oh. didn't you want to end it on a happy Right, note? right. Uh, and was there, our, were there any of our other talking points? Yeah, there has to be. I don't believe that there's no <laughs> one section that we can't end on that's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something fun. Yeah, do, what's something fun that's coming up for you? Oh... <laughs> Oh, aside from well, 1669. Oh, well, I guess, no, but this is, a this is um, you know, we mentioned this at the very start, but, um, and I haven't even made any content about this. So this is the first <gasps> time I'm saying about it. But this news. is, so people, I, I have lived in LA for the past two years and mm -hmm. people frequently thought I lived in New York, mm -hmm. okay. but I ha I've i never actually lived in New York. And I just signed my first lease for an <gasps> apartment in New York. Oh my God. Huge. Um, which starts in October. Oh my God. And so I'm like kind of, I'm going to be by coastal but I'm like, a f I will officially have a place in New York, which as a theater kid, to be able to finally say I'm going to live in New York for a second is super exciting. What was and the, like, what was the precipice for that? Like, are you, do you have a specific gig? I was or? just always there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, because there was always some sort of work. I'm, do you totally. go to New York often? I used to go a lot more, I think pre-COVID. Um, and then after things, you know, we were able to do like, do any kind of PR stuff a little right. more remotely. I go less. Um, are you, are, so are you an LA person? Cause I know you went to college in Toronto, mm -hmm. which is like, people say that's the New York of Canada, right? It, it is. It's like a smaller, easier to navigate, cleaner New York. That's what I was saying. I honestly yeah. feel like it's Chicago. It's, it, I would it say it's more similar Chicago to Chicago. Vibes. It's for sure more similar to Chicago. Yeah. And so I don't thrive in New York. I really, okay. I'm, I'm a really anxious Lauren individual. Lauren deteriorates in I New York. Literally Have you ever taken the subway? Okay, so I, I in Toronto we take the subway That's every single time. That's not right. What he asked. What's it, right? That's right. Not what he asked. Yeah. yeah. In, in New York, yes, I have. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, many okay. Times. What's the subway called in Toronto? Uh, the TTC. Oh, fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The Toronto Transit Commission. Got it. Sure. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Um, yeah, no, the, the sub, cause the subway is a big indicator of how well you handle right. New York. Yeah. And I don't. Was it kind of like just for fun or were you like, I'm going to go somewhere and take the subway as my mode of transportation? Oh no, it was like every time I've, I've spent a lot of time in New York, okay. I've got friends that live there. And then when we do things like they just take the subway places cause that's how people get it's around on, there. And it's the fastest way to and get places fast, most 100%. of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I've taken the subway on purpose a whole bunch of times <laughs> with purpose. purpose. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. <laughs> yes. I'm just an anxious individual who doesn't thrive with that much like 
chaos around me. Totally. I think I also like space and peacefulness and quiet. And right, which is, she's an LA person. Yeah, we are LA Los people. Angeles, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. also fuck East Coast weather. Like yeah. you you went to school in Boston. But you grew up in Canada? I know, and that's why yeah. I live here because oh. I refuse to do yeah. the sleet and the ice and yeah. the hail. You know what? And oh. were you ever one of those people who was like, I need the seasons? No. Okay. No. So no. I thought I was yeah. until living here for about two years. And then when I went back to the East Coast last winter, I was like, oh my God. Yes. Terrible. I forgot that it's like violent. Like, like I don't I don't check the weather when I go outside Why would when you? I'm here. Yeah. You know what's I be. remember when I was in Boston, oh my God. every morning I would have to check the weather like, to just figure chill? out what I'm gonna wear. Yeah. yeah. Um, because it was gonna be cold and terrifying like, most how, of the What year. type of precipitation and how cold right. will right. it be today? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I but I will say, like, I I do like New York has been on my bucket list to live there as at least for a second. As a theater kid, that makes so much yeah. sense. As a theater kid, yes. and I always wanted to do it in my like before I turned twenty five. Mm -hmm. okay. I turned twenty five in December, so I'm like, I just want to be able to say I lived in New York at some point. Yeah, and like and experiencing you're doing that. I mean, the fact you're knocking this off the bucket list before twenty five yeah, is crazy. It's pretty great, thrilling. But also yeah. at thirty, I think to myself, I always thought I would have found myself in New York for at right. least a period. I don't Never. know when that would. Take place now, right? It ain't gonna right. be with me, and right. But right. like this, I got on five years later. It's not happening. Yeah, yeah. 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 So do it, right? Do yeah. It. And so, so I'm gonna. So New York it. boys, New York boys, DMs. and LA boys, get yes. in the DMs. Yes, everyone. You saw him deep throat the mic. The DMs yeah. are open. Yeah, that mm -hmm. did happen. And, and like I said again at the start, like I will be wherever I need for love. Right, exactly. Right. We've got two home bases now for love. <laughs> for for love. Bellevue, Washington is going to be calling him to be great. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. I mean, that's the thing. I feel like it always happens with someone I don't live right. anywhere near. It'll be Mississippi State. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Someone really hot slid into my DMs who lives in Italy. I was like, oh, what am I supposed to yeah. do? That could be a fun little, Italy. like, little, know, like, fun, right? get on a plane. Yeah. Get a, get the fuck over there. You're going to love it. It was only about like three messages back and forth. So there wasn't too mm. much. So it's love? So it's love. It's love. Yeah. What love. are you doing here? Get over there. Right. Yeah. Thank right. you for coming on the pod. Thank you. We went through a whirlwind. We I like really that. covered so we many really topics. Covered a lot. I like yeah. that. I, I don't think I've really dove into like the whole everything that happened at rehab specifically too. Like I've talked about the sobriety story mm -hmm. and um, like my intervention and everything, but the ins and outs of how rehab worked and how it was like this really crazy yeah. program. I don't think there's anything, there are many other programs like that in the world wow. that treat you that way. Cause so many of them are just like very much, we love you yeah. because um, yeah, but I mean, not to literally dive back into that again. So <laughs> I really, I really have not told that story, but it was Still really good? fun to like go through it. Oh not, my God. not fun, but like yeah. it was <laughs> nice to uh, kind of like tell Share. that story yeah. out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like I'm glad, I'm glad that people will get to hear it. I'm now. sure there'll be people in the comments too who relate or have a family member. We, not again, not, I'll make this real quick. Yeah. But we did an episode on wilderness therapy. Um, yeah. Because I went down a TikTok rabbit hole on that as well too. And it was shocking the yeah. amount of people who had experienced or had known someone who experienced someone that went through yep. wilderness therapy. A lot of my friends in rehab went through it. I, I can imagine. Yeah. I bet there's crossover there for sure. There's so much. Yeah, I bet yeah. there's a lot. I bet, which is another, it's just another traumatizing thing. Totally. Like yeah. waking up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and being taken by men in your house. Oh my like, God, terrifying. Horrifying. Terrifying. That's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. I just uh, don't know how you go back to real life without thinking about that always. Traumatized. Yeah. Yes. How, like yeah. you must, it would be hard to sleep. Mm. Yeah. Literally, you would have actual issues. I'm yeah. so glad we ended on something really positive. <laughs> I know. So New, York, New York, New York, New York. New York, deep yeah. throating mics. Deep throating mics. No, we've got a coffee company coming now. We've got yes. New York. We've got boys on in many cloud area couch. coasts. We've got cloud, cloud couches. couches. Well, what's funny is too, like the TikToks that will be used for this um, mm. podcast will mm. be of me deep throating the mic and showing my hole. Um, and yes. then they will be suddenly looped into like a <laughs> deep <laughs> rehab story. <laughs> They'll be like, oh my God, that looked like such a fun Pardon. podcast. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Like, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. But we're so glad you were along for the ride. Like and subscribe. Like subscribe. Chris, I mean TikTok, is that you is that where you want people to come see you? Go yes. Yeah, well, I actually just started my own YouTube channel. Okay. I found it. I hadn't had 8, one. Subscribers. Yeah, eight thousand. Let's go, baby. It's big. Well, we're gonna yeah. I'm coming for your spot. <gasps> come on. Um yeah, so no, I just started. I've only posted one video and I'm thinking of probably doing a lot more like singing content on there. Yeah, you should, hundred um, percent. But 
Yeah, so Chris Olson on YouTube. We'll, we'll link. We'll, link. we'll do link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, yeah, go yeah. Ch check out my YouTube. Maybe there will be another video by then, but if not, just <laughs> subscribe and then a video will come and at then some bully point. him until he does it again. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you ne leave enough comments, uh, I am very peer pressured. Say, negative yeah. reinforcement will be really important. Or positive for you. affirmation. Yeah, positive affirmation. We love heart. this so much. Please do another. <laughs> 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 Chris, like you're that. fucking cool. I'm glad you have. <laughs> Thank hang out. you. You guys are cool. Remind me your names. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Goodbye, Bye, guys. <laughs>